Conservation Commission meeting is uh, now in order. In, in, and uh, it's being uh, televised by RCV, RCTV. And you can find it on the government channels Verizon 33 and Comcast 22. And the first item is a notice of intent, 270-0697, um, 26 Mile Post Road, Map 7, Lot 92, Dimeo. And uh, they submitted, we had a hearing last couple weeks ago uh, for the notice of intent, and we had asked for a planting plan, which we all have got copies. Yep. Um, so, would... Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, thank you for the record, Jack Sullivan, Sullivan Engineering Group, and I'm here with uh, Jesse and Connie DeMeo, the property owners. And correct, well, we, we're here to um, get approval on the in-ground pool, but there were some questions at the last hearing and that he needed to clean up the plan a little bit because you know, we were seeking a variance. Um, I wanted to get something in for discussion, and then with the commission seemed agreeable to, to this proposal, uh, we went forward and we added a, a lot more detail to it. Um, so the in-ground pool stayed the same, same dimension, same size. The pool patio uh, was slightly extended out into this area before it was to this area. We showed the fencing to surround the pool in the green, and there'll be a gate for access here, and there'll be a gate here. Um, the retaining wall is going to be a Versalock wall uh, with the uh, cobble units put in, and it'll be less than four feet high. It's a landscape wall, but we, we called it out as a Versalock wall. Uh, Norris Environmental did put together a letter, and they worked with me on the planting plan and showed how they wanted to see the plants done. Um, the existing shed that was permitted in the past will be removed from the site. Currently, it's inside the 25-foot uh, no disturbance zone. Um, and the pool mechanicals have been shown as well. Um, they'll be tucked right in here. Um, and I did put together a letter um, um, meeting the criteria for the variance request and tried to spell out why I think a variance could be granted by this commission. And Norse's letter has been submitted for the record as well, detailing the plans that they want to see and how they should be spaced in the enhancement planting area. Are there any questions from members of the commission? Um, did we receive an operation and maintenance plan for the pool? Not for the pool. And the planting area, um, we're going to condition that area below the 25-foot uh, no disturbance line. Well, it's actually the 25-foot Z and V line as a continuing condition that needs to be planted and maintained. Yep, that's understood. And the owners are aware, you know, when the plants are done, they have to survive two growing seasons and um, before any sort of certificate would be issued. But we understand there'd be a condition that they they have to be maintained perpetuity. Is there uh, the need for a, a bond for any of these plants? <coughs> Well, let me ask you this in the order conditions. Um, is there some kind of condition saying that they have to replace plants if they don't survive? There, yeah, I have to write a different, um, kind of more stringent uh, planting plan kind of condition that this, you know, to allow this, we're going to, it's an ongoing condition that this needs to be maintained as a native vegetated area mm -hmm. and uh, plants must be maintained in perpetuity. So they're responsible for replacing throughout, I don't know, the next many years. So with that being said, I mean, what's the use of having a bond if That's what I was gonna there's guess. really no releasing it if right. they need right. to be replaced? So. 
Yeah, I, I was thinking of that too. Yeah. I'm just throwing out there. Um, any other questions for members of the commission? Nope. Any questions from um, the audience? So we would need the operation maintenance plan and I'm not sure this is not a is this pool does this need to be seasonal cleaning or anything like that where would the water go is it self-contained or it's what's your expectation Jesse can you talk on the pool system I know I know it's a cartridge system so there's no back is it a salt water pool salt water okay. it's a salt water pool and it's a cartridge system um, um, I don't know about in the fall if they have to draw water down or how, how they do that, but we, we could get that information if it's a condition that prior to a building permit, something be submitted to Chuck. Yeah, we need operation and maintenance plan. If any drawdown happens, you have to do it ab above the, I'm going to say the front half of the pool, whatever, wherever that is, the 96 contour line. Yeah. That's something we can provide. Definitely. Jesse's in the process of trying to have the pool company get their building permit application together on this, so they, they, I'm sure they have information on the operation and maintenance and how in the fall and in the spring how they deal with the pool. So would they be drawing, when they draw down the water for the winter, do they release that water out to the wetland area? Or? No, they, they won't be able to do that. But because it would be salt. We'll need, some, we'll need something in writing how they will deal with it. Um, it can't be released to the well. So the reason you draw the water down is to get it below the pipes so you can blow the pipes out so they don't freeze. Mm -hmm. So the alternative is to put some kind of a mechanism so that it comes up above the water line, blow it out from there, seal them off. Um, so you can do you, the. Physics say you can do it somehow. I just don't know how you do it. You can do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how they do it, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll provide some information to yeah. the commission so everyone's comfortable with how it works. So we're not ready to close, I take it? Not without an L&M plan. Okay. Yeah, I don't know enough about it, Jack. I mean, if you can help us out with how, I mean, I know you just said you did. I don't know enough yeah. about it either, to be honest. I, yeah. I, 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 haven't done too many saltwater pools, and I, I know with the cartridge system, you don't. You, there's no backwash. But as far as spring and fall, how you deal with opening and closing, I, I don't know. I do know they were hoping to try to close so that they could. I, I'm, I'm assuming an order hasn't been uh, written yet, and Chuck would need time to do that. They're just trying. They're trying not to lose the season, and they're more than willing to provide. The information to the commission on how how they'll deal with the pool opening and closing. The order we written for the next meeting, and you just whatever we're talking about, and need you can just if you can get us to it between now and the next meeting. Okay. You know, it's not going to cost you any time. Okay. Yeah, um, that's fair. He doesn't have any anything an order written tonight, anyway, so we would have to review. Okay, so that, then we won't lose any time. Any okay, yep. that's fine. Is the the patio is that pervious or pavers? It is pervious. It, it'll be pavers. with pavers. So yeah. we'll but that doesn't uh, always mean it's no, pervious. it's not pervious. Right. It's pavers. It's pervious. not pervious. They'll be pervious. Okay. I have to say how we say that. They will yeah, be pervious. They will allow water to move through. Getting two it's not a solid it's surface. Just telling you what I heard. Just increase the spacing. What's that? Well, it's a lot of ways to make it impervious. And the runoff, I assume, for anything that hits that patio is going to go towards the wetland. It's going to be a slight, slightly pitched in that direction. It'll pitch away from the pool in all directions. So Away from the pool. It's not going to go to the house, though, so you're kind of no, trapped in that area. No, it'll go. It, they'll probably try to pitch it right off. It, there'll be a, a grass area before it gets out to, to the plant area, so there'll be a, a filter area with the grass. Any other questions, comments? Do we hear a motion to continue? I move we continue the notice of intent to the next meeting. A second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. And if he, if the owners supply that information for the next meeting, do you think I'm needed for the next meeting? 
No. I guess I'll let you, I'll send out the order to you. Okay. And that's usually all we need. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just save them some money if I don't. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Moving right on schedule. Um, we have a request for determination of applicability 2017 10, 288 292 Grove Street, lot 37, lot 4, Meadowbrook Golf Club. Do we have a representative? Uh, Mr. Sullivan's the engineer on that. <laughs> That's what, I think like, he's I just why he's walking out. I think he just wanted to finish with. Sure. His, uh, and you're from the uh, club too. My name is Kevin Roach. I'm the president of Metal Golf Club. Okay. Did everyone sign in the attendance uh, oh, right over at the front door? Thank you. I was hoping you weren't going for the night. No, I was just trying to fast track that. <laughs> what I got from Andrew, but what you had sent me separately didn't Oh. So I don't know. I'm hoping that what Andrew had was the same exact. It's the same exact. Yeah. It looks cute. Do you know what page you want to bring with the sheet? Now let's start with sheet two. Just uh, I'll refresh the commission's memory because it's been quite a while since we've been in. And then uh, and I'll have you go to sheet. So it's been a, a while since we've been in front of you. Um, the golf club's been trying to work with uh, one of the direct abutters on this project to try to come up with some sort of agreement on how the club will be rebuilt and some of the site features that we're proposing. So it's been a little while. There's been some back and forth. Um, but at this point, we're trying to move ahead with a, a new clubhouse. And as far as conservation concerns, there there is some proposed work within the 100-foot buffer zone. But the club itself, the, the new building, will be outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. And really, the only work within 100 feet um, it is uh, we're going to look to construct a rain garden um, to deal with some of the drainage that comes off the upper parking lot. Um, I'm also putting in an underground infiltration system, a drainage infiltration system to capture the roof runoff from the building. Um, and the existing site entrance, which is shown on this plan, is going to remain the same. Um, our previous plan, we had the entrance being moved over uh, further towards like the compost area uh, down the street, but um, talking with the abutter, we thought it would be best if we left the entrance where it is. The change is in the previous submission when the entrance was going to be in, in this location, it opened up a lot of area that pavement could be removed within the 100 foot buffer zone and we were going to grass that area. Um, now we cannot do that. Um, but still, the, besides that, all other design features are the same. There's no trees to be cut within the 100 foot buffer zone. There's no work proposed within um, about 40 feet of the buffer zone. There's an existing lawn area. Um, that, that's going to be the area that the rain guarding's being proposed. So if you go to sheet four, Chuck, I can show that. This is perfect, yeah. That's perfect. Can we get it? Can we get a little bit bigger? Am I on the right, right there, yep, right? That's good. So, Norris Environmental had flagged the wetland line, which is shown here. We show the 25 foot ZNV line, the 35 foot no structure zone, the edge of the lawn presently is right here, which will be the limit of our work line. This is the existing site entrance, and it will remain the existing site entrance. Um, it's being widened by a, a couple feet, um, right where the existing columns are to the club. It's about 20 to 21 feet wide. We're making it 24 feet wide. You really need 24 feet for two-car access. Um, and what we're proposing to do is put vertical granite curbing along the edge 
of, of the driveway going into the club on both sides. There was a concern from planning board meetings that water along this along this pitch comes right down right into Grove Street and there's been some concerns with drainage uh, from the abutters. So what we're doing is we're looking to put in a trench drain right at the entrance. It'll be on, on the private property, not within the town's right away. Um, water coming down, this drive will be collected in the trench drain. It'll go out to a rain garden. There's a riprap spreader um, prior to entry into the rain garden. And then there's a, a riprap emergency overflow um, from the rain garden as well. So that this trench drain is really just an added feature to this design. I didn't even model it in my um, drainage analysis because um, the entire clubhouse, this is a proposed clubhouse, the entire roof area will be captured by a Caltech uh, infiltration system. So the high, entire 100-year storm event will be contained in that. There's really good soils out here. It's all, all sands and gravels. Um, my previous design, I had a um, rainwater harvesting system. So the rainwater from the roof was going to be captured, and then the club was going to use that for irrigation. Um, the town engineer had, had a good concern. The club shuts down mid-October, and he was concerned, you know, if they only run their sprinklers May to October, then it leaves you know five or six months where if we get a heavy rainstorm, that that system would just overflow and that there'd be no sort of recharge value. So I actually eliminated the rainwater harvesting system, which I think was a good design feature, but uh, to address some of the stormwater concerns that engineering had, the, the Caltech system makes more sense. The rest of the design is basically the same. The 100 foot buffer zone is right here. So it's really only a small portion of the entrance that's still the same, the, the, the pavement area. We're not increasing any impervious area within the 100 foot buffer zone. Again, no trees are to be cut. The grass area that's in this area will be converted to a rain garden, so that, that's a positive feature. The remainder of the work is outside of the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, there is a catch basin here, so we show that a silt sack will be placed in that catch basin um, prior to construction. Um, and we show a 12-inch diameter mulch sock to be placed at the limit of work line. Um, we cannot close with you tonight. We, we're going to the CPDC in July, but uh, we've, we've submitted to both CPDC and CONCOM, so we wanted to get in front of you tonight and just kind of bring you up to speed to see if there's any questions you might have prior to going to CPDC. Back in the day, when you first submitted, um, was that uh, a proposed country club in the, uh, roughly the same area? Same spot. Okay. So the, For some reason in my head, I had a sitting on top of the old one, but that wasn't right. No, it, it's, 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 the, the existing club is like 16 feet off of Grove Street. We've moved it back, it's 34 feet, mm -hmm. so we're more conforming yeah. with zoning. It's relatively, in generally, the same location. There was some talk at the first CPDC meeting that trying to move the club further back on the site. The club looked at that option. It would have involved a lot of expense, changing some of the the, the course around and we we fell back to the same position that this makes the most sense for the club to go in this spot. When you originally submitted, it seems like there must have been an increase in impervious surface because there was a there was going to be more grass. It looks like now that you've increased there, going to be more, there was going to be more pervious surface. Right. Now you've increased the impervious. It, does that, ex, is that? That's accurate. The, 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 so I did a calculation on one of the sheets. I showed the right. total impervious existing versus proposed. We're increasing impervious surfaces by about 3,000 square feet. So that is the reason the, the footprint of the clubhouse is, is around 5,800 square feet, so the rough numbers, that's not exact. Um, but that the entire roof area of the club will be collected mm -hmm. and, and conveyed to the stormwater area. So I, I more than exceed any sort of stormwater analysis, but 
I also added the trench drain just to try yeah, to... but I feel so like we get gypped. <laughs> you did get gypped. <laughs> yeah. You did get gypped because we were removing about 2,000 square feet of pavement. Right. And we were going to put grass in that area. But um, we thought it was a better design having the entrance over here. But, um, you know, trying to work with the abutters and, and try to make everyone happy fell back to that we're going to maintain the same entrance. And that was six months of discussions. So I, I, I feel it's a better design where we had the proposed driveway and it's better for you creating more green space. But still, this, this project really, when you look at the 100 foot buffer, there's not much work besides it's more of a lands, you know, with the rain garden, it's, it's more landscaping. We're not adding any impervious surfaces closer to the wetland. So, Jack, just where, this, where you've got the circle, you're increasing, because that was grass area before, right? You're increasing the impervious surface there. Right. That's, that's yeah, that surface water that's not going to go into the infiltration, right? That, that's not, is that part of this existing conditions and proposed conditions count that I, right to the right there? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and, but that's not actually going into this infiltration field. So the rain garden is supposed, should have the capacity to, to handle that runoff. From the driveway. From, from the driveway. From, from the driveway only. Yeah. So previously, I had the club going to a rainwater harvesting system, and there was an overflow out to the rain garden, and it was going to be like a 10 or 20,000, I think it was a 20,000 gallon tank I had. Yeah. Um, but so now when I model it, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we're significantly bringing down the, the, the post rates of um, peak rates of runoff and volume that would be coming off the site because now with the entire, the existing club, the roof drains out, it just goes, it ends up out to Grove Street. Now we're taking that all on site. Yep. So it's a big improvement drainage wise what we're doing now. I guess what I, I just want to make sure is that the grain garden is, is still sized appropriately uh, for the pave, pavement runoff. For the pavement runoff. Particularly if we're, we're concentrating it, <coughs> we're concentrating everything there. In that area. Um, it's smaller. The rain gardens decrease. Pre the previous design, when the entrance was over, <coughs> the rain garden was about 60, 70% bigger. Yeah. I, yeah. Had to, I had to shriek it down. I still wanted to give that feature and I have an overflow and I can do a size but the reality is the rain guard now might handle like a two-year storm anything more would go over I didn't model it but I can I can model because the, the only thing I see is you know the grates at 87 the overflows eight, eight three inches lower right right so the, the second that backs up it's the the entrance that's gonna really start to back up there um, I have the the outflow three inches lower than what the trench grades set at. Yeah. Um, so what if the, the grades were tricky? It's tricky because yeah. there's somewhat of a high groundwater table. Yeah. The good thing is we have good soils, but also I was trying to put this grate. I was trying to, you know, I, I'm putting it at this elevation and you know trying to get it all to work. That's all I could do was that three inch separation. But I, I can get some numbers to the commission on, on to show how, how it would work. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea just because I, I think it's a good idea to know when that rain garden has reached its capacity. What what event is, is it going to be sized for? So, so the other question, maybe you talk this through with the town. But if we have a lot of snow and it hardens up, and then we have some rain, is everything? flowing into a bowl that can get stopped up or is there there's an outlet there's an outlet but if 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 a plow covers up the pushes some snow into the rain garden or whatever I'm just trying to get an idea of because I, I can't tell from this right so the the parking part, lot. part of that is a, along the driveway there'll be vertical granite curving now right now it's just pavement yeah so with the vertical granite curving, there'll be a six inch reveal. So any plow, there, there shouldn't be any snow being pushed into the rain garden at all. Um, where do they keep, where do they plow their snow now? To the back of the lot. To the back of the parking area? Yeah, they, I mean, we no. keep, we keep the lot no, it cleared away from snow. 
are, but in the off season as well as in you know the winter months, etc., the property is cared for and there's plowing done. Is it? It's not used in the winter time. Why you? Why do you plow the entire parking lot? We use it for meetings. So so we have board meetings of the club, etc. So we'll use the property and we push most push it up the hill up to the back and we on. have like I don't know 20 spots open for meetings that we have at the club during the off season so I'm just a little wary of between the trench drain I, mean, I know there's a separate town stormwater catch basin. catch basin thank you how much of the you may have mentioned this but how much of the stormwater is running down from the parking lot down along that curbing. That's what Mike asked. I need to provide that information to the commission. Because it, it just has the potential for an awful lot of water, and if both the road is sloping towards and the parking lot is sloping towards that point, and that plugs up with ice and snow, I'm not the engineer, but. And, it, and really it was just a concern where people said water sheet flowing off that driveway into Grove Street. Overwhelming that catch basin. So how does it work? And, and if I the guess catch basin isn't clean, um, so <coughs> the trench drain was put in. Like I said, I, I need to provide some information on the rain garden and what it can handle. And, and you know, maybe in a larger storm, we'll see that the trench grate would overflow out to Grove, but we're taking a significant amount of water that now is going to Grove. It's going to be less going to Grove Street, no it's, matter what. It's less, and the and the catch basin isn't moving. So, in theory. Theory, this makes it better. I just think it should uh, be an improvement. I, I think it's just worth knowing, yeah. particularly if there's an expectation with the abutters, with the people that are seeing this, that the the idea of this is that it works in a storm. Let, let's find out what what it works for. So, Jack, wh yeah. wh where does the water that sheets off of the existing club does that go down the driveway now onto Gro Grove Street? Yes. Yeah. It's a good. It's a pretty good hill. Yeah, I know. I know. So it, yeah. it, it just sheet flows out onto okay. Grove Street. And then it... So all theory, of that now it, is going to go it, into that infiltration the, from the... The entire, the entire roof will go into this infiltration field. And that overflow is from, like, downspouts. They have an overflow capacity on those. That's right. And, and today that... It's a hundred year storm. It, it's size for a hundred year storm, so a seven inch rain right. event. So And today the the runoff from the roof goes where? Where does it go now, Kevin? Here and there? Out of every, on the every corner? Yeah, it's just yeah. spilled. I mean there's the nothing ground. like this. What 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 Jack has designed and what we wanted to put in the building is take care of the rainwater that we can control off of the roofing and so in the design we wanted to find a way to get that water away from going down to growth. So that's taking a lot of water out of the system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is there um more or less roof now. It's about equal. Same amount of roof. And the overflow, I just asked this, but the overflow for the country club is yeah, the, the downspouts have the capacity for each to overflow. So wherever they are is where it's going to overflow. Right. So the sheet flow from the driveway. Now, I think I understand how you would calculate how much water can be um, retained in a bowl. But what I'm unsure of is the calculation that you're doing to trigger, try to figure out how much water is going to get there. Because I see that that's a hill, it's a driveway, and how can you ensure that what that calculation is doing captures all that water in a heavy rainstorm? It might jump the trench. The trench might be filled up. And then secondly, is that rain garden designed for the velocity of water that can come out of it? Um, because I know that the, some, some of these are all vegetated with mulch, mm -hmm. and, I, and I can see if there's a lot of volume coming through there, that it would be pushed away. So maybe more rocks in the front to kind of disperse that, maybe a four bay. So what I was, and then the last question is, this area between the rain garden and the and the resource area, I assume it's owned by the club. Yes. So there's there's no natural way for the water after the spillway to get down there. Would it be would it help your design to put a pipe in that rain garden area and put a put a 
level spreader down in front of the uh, resource area? It would. It would, but j j just to kind of go over some of your questions, it's easy for me to determine what area flows to this trench drain. I can easily figure that, that that's, that's not a problem. But isn't it going to catch all of what you're, what you're expected to catch? That's what I have to show. But your point, like if the trench drain, if there's leaves that fell, fallen and no one maintains it, it's just like the catch basin. If no one cleans, the, that's why you have the operation maintenance plan. If people don't keep up with the drainage infrastructure, yeah, then there's a chance water, it's not going to work as designed. So that's why you have the operation and maintenance plan. I don't, and the idea is water coming in, it'll hit these stone spreaders. Like the, the outlet spreader is six feet wide by eight feet long. So any velocity, this, the riprap's going to break up that velocity moving out of, out of the spillway. Um, I don't know if it would help me to extend this or not. I thought your question was going to be if, if you know, we should put an overflow pipe out to the town drain here. But I think, I think it makes more same sense. Spot, yeah. Say, uh, yeah, I think then you get into the same spot. So I think this, where we have about 40 feet, so anything coming over, it's going to go over natural ground and out to the wetland area. I think it's, it's better for the neighborhood. You're not going to get but that's, that's, that's not water and that's not lawn. That's that's like leaf litter. It's it's like a wooded wooded. Yeah, area. so it's all going to erode there. You're going to have it. Well, that's why I have the the, the, the this this six by eight riprap area, so we don't get the erosion. They think that you've only sized that for a two year storm, and you can expect there there would be bigger storms. There will be bigger storms. So you, so you that, had that, to shrink that because you didn't have the space, so you right. just. Okay. Yep. So bef the entrance was here. Previously, we had it yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. So when we came in, we were opening this area up. This was going to be a larger rain garden, and, and we were also the pa the pavement over here. We were going to take some of this pavement out in this area and make it grass within the town's right away as well. Um, but um, this is kind of, this is what we came up with. This has been the existing entrance for years and years and years, and just going to look at to keep it that way. How, how wide are those grates? The entrance. The grates are one foot eight inches wide. Yeah. The trench drain is going to be twenty inches. About twenty. Uh, yeah, about twenty inches. Uh, and how deep? They're 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 one foot four what inches deep. Uh, one foot one foot eight. four inches deep. That's about yeah. Well, on the inside, the the outside is one foot eight inch. <coughs> So, so what's the base? What's what do you think the elevation of the base of the riprap as a spillway to the end of the rain garden is? I mean, you say what the top is, the el top elevation. Of the or do you mean? Or, yeah, so, it, does this spillway at elevation eighty six seventy five? Is that that's well, the base of the riprap? That's the base of the riprap. Okay. And so the trench grates at elevation 87. So like yeah. Mike said, the, the, yeah. the outlet's three inches lower. Yeah. Um, so in, in the, that's what I need to see, though. In the larger storms, do I exceed elevation 87? If I do, then we then some water would slip. Right. Um, like I say, we're trying to make an improvement. I'm not saying I'm handling large storm events in the rain garden. It's just a way to try to deal with the sheet flow. It's a problem now. It's I don't know how else you would deal with it. It's, you, you have to put something across that entrance, and it seemed like the trench grate made the most sense, and the rain garden seemed like a nice feature, but I, I will provide some numbers on it. So, so does the end of that riprap, uh, the toe of that riprap, does that end at a constructed 86 contour? Correct. Or an existing? Existing. Existing 86 contour. Yeah. Over, um, over eight feet. Okay, so at that point, if the water slowed down enough, it's just overland flow and infiltration right. and at that point go through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that area, we had spoken at a previous meeting that we were, that there was, that there might be some ad additional plantings downslope of the riprap area. I don't know if you remember that from, I have a note from the last. No, I don't remember that. I mean, we'd be open to it. I, I don't remember it. But. I, I don't re recall based on this configuration, what the landscape is like in that, at the base of that riprap, I like between the riprap and the 35 foot. 
I'd have to look at it with Chuck or the commission. I'm not sure. I, I don't I think remember it's a that. Steep slope. But as far as vegetation, Chuck, do you know? I, I think it's leaf litter with a uh, canopy of leaves above it. So you know that. What would you expect? Just some sort of volunteer vegetation that dies off. It's going to yeah, concentrate down there. It's right? just it's something I saw. Like, Go to the road from that. Well, that, uh, and that I, that's, I'm not familiar with like the grading. No, it, when, if you get it down there, it's it's not coming back out. Okay. Not sure. And I just I just I just think the pathway down there is, you know, left for whatever runoff is. You know, it's going to create its own. It's going to create its own channel, and the channel will eventually form down there. And that's why I'm saying maybe we should take care of that now. The pipe or the and, yeah. and you you guys do own that land? I didn't remember. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not outside the question to say, you know, you could do something there. So the rain garden itself. This is the property line right here and here. So the rain garden is situated on the club's property entirely. We we don't have any of the feature out within the town right away, and their property <laughs> goes way over this way. Jack, is the Trench drain, higher or lower, are the same as the catch basin. Do you know? I have a rim elevation on the catch basin. I just can't see what it is. 8485. 8485? So the trench grade, we're, we're two, two foot three inches higher with the trench grade than the catch basin rim. So in theory, then, if whatever's whatever would be going into the trench drain went right over it it would go where it's going today which it's is going to go where it goes basin. today so that's what i'm trying to say we're making some improvement even if that trench drain overtopped in larger storms still going where it's going it's going, going there now it's, it, everything goes there now so i'm at least taking some of it but i should i should qualify what i'm taking just so everyone's comfortable with it okay because i'm not i'm not suggesting i'm taking a t you know large storm events yeah and I can show when that trench drain would overtop. So maybe in a 25-year storm, it overtops. But that, that's like a five-inch rainstorm, five-and-a-half-inch rainstorm. But those are the numbers I can give to the commission so we, we all know what's going on. So. Do we have a... Um, do you, did you look at the, um, the rain garden vegetation and and think about the volume of water that may go through there when you when you design that I will though are you, are you gonna come up with some some sort of plan you gonna leave the grass but you know oh, no, I have a I, th uh, I, yeah, I have a planting plan but um, when I see the water flow that comes through I'll make sure whatever plants I have can can deal with it I mean the rain garden itself is only I think it's only like it's under two feet. Yeah. Is it about the size of the one at Ravens? Yeah. Which isn't large. Mm -mm. I walked through that. <laughs> I can I can put some numbers to it to show what's going on. And you can't. You can't create a larger area down slope from, you know, where the spillway is, just to kind of extend that. Let's... I, I could extend it to... I, what I was trying to do is go to the limit of the lawn. Mm -hmm. I, could, I could extend the rain garden further towards the wetland area. I, I didn't know how the commission would look at that. You know, I, I was trying to say we're not taking any trees as a project. I'm not sure what's there. Yeah, there might be I, I just located the edge of lawn. If there's some mature trees, I didn't want to start taking trees down and then having to replicate. I think there is something there. So I didn't really uh, consider that. I, I was kind of saying, okay, we're going to convert a lawn area to a rain garden and that should be positive, but I need to support that with some numbers. So instead of a rain garden, you could do a four bay with a vegetated yeah. Section, you know, yeah. you could. This could be a riprap, four bay, yep. and then spill over into the vegetated area that Anika was asking about, with the planting somewhere and in, involved in this. Yep. 
um, which will get you closer to the base where, where I want you to be. So I can do that. So the increase in impervious, it's basically because of the sort of little traffic circle at the beginning. Right that's in right. Front of the that's right. So, so that's and eight thousand square feet. And, and some of the walkways. It, it, so we're adding some, you know, concrete walks, um, some asphalt walks, the the drop off circle, which will have a landscaped island. So. Okay. Now I'm looking at the impervious area breakdown on sheet five, and it says the pavement existing is thirteen eighteen square feet. Yeah. And then the proposed pavement is 9320 square feet so an increase in 8,000 square feet just from the just from the roundabout and well some of the pavement is some pa asphalt walkways paved walkways as well but that's not the walkways are separate on this right that's separate okay because I walkways are separate walkway. walkways go from I'd have just to <coughs> pavement. I'd have to look at it but it, it does it, it does add a, that roundabout adds a lot of pavement no, it's it's eighteen. It's it's what it's eighteen feet travel lane around it. It's yeah. it's a pretty good radius. So, yeah, if you you get a lot of pavement out of that. Any other comments, questions from the commission members? Um, you know, I don't think it's necessary necessary, but it may be a good idea just to. You know, there's not much difference in the count, um, but just to show what is going down that hill today, and it's in, in essence, what you're taking away mm -hmm. from what's going into that sewer, it might be a good representation of, you know, how this is helping or improving the, at least what's district, you know, what right now is getting funneled into that town sewer, and how much capacity you're you're relieving of that part of the system? I'll show the drainage area, and I'll I'll do an existing conditions, just just like I do with the typical drainage. I'll do it existing and then proposed, yeah. and, and show what what the difference is with a two-year storm. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. <coughs> I'd like to see that. Um, we need an O and M plan for the rain garden. Yep. I think I have that included in my drainage report. If you have it, it it's at the very end. Okay. I think I have the drainage report from uh, July. Mm -mm, I think no. Oh, okay, it's the old one. Yeah. I don't know. Is there a new one in here? Oh, okay. July. 90, yeah, 2017. Yeah, I've got revised June 4th. Oh, okay. Revised June 4th. Okay. So on the, on the last Sorry. page is the O&M. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Any comments from the community? Please state your name. Hi, uh, Nick Bonanno. I live at 283 Grove Street. I'm one of two abutters um, that have had discussions with Mount Board. And the other is Paul Grasowitz, 293 Grove Street. He can't be here this evening. Um, if I can say a few things. First, I want to say that we both appreciate the fact that Meadowbrook has reached out to have some discussions with us. We've talked about a number of items. We haven't talked about all the items. And when this was submitted, there was no agreement reached that both parties could live with. So um, hopefully the discussions will continue. It was a bit of a surprise to see this submitted um, last week. But if I can address a couple of things that were talked about. Um, <coughs> Currently, if, if uh, I don't have, I don't know the exact elevation. Grove <coughs> Street on the west side is the way it's constructed in general. It's a super elevated road, so the west side of the pavement on the street is as high or a little higher than the center line. So the water is directed all to the east side, where the same side where the homes are. And uh, right at that spot, uh, outside the entrance, there may be a slight uh, depression, but it's still basically super elevated. 
the grade up that drive is something like nine percent or ten percent. Jack, you probably have the exact number. Yep. Uh, and, and so we get we get all the runoff from that parking lot that today is directed towards the exit. Uh, there is no curbing today, so a lot of that runoff, um, some of it anyways, goes onto the grass area. Once the curbing is introduced and the building as it's shown proposed, which is rotated uh, counterclockwise from the existing building, we have uh, what's created now is a funnel effect. So you have a curbing on the left side of the, of the drive that extends a little bit in the parking lot. You get the foundation from the building on the right side, and that's going to force more water into that narrow uh, drive area. I think uh, Chuck mentioned the, the, uh, the risk of water jumping that storm grate is, is probably high. Uh, the grate is eight inches, I guess, exposed. The uh, depth of the trench is roughly a foot and a half by a foot and a half. So that trench can hold, I don't know, my math isn't too good. Is that maybe 40 or 50 cubic feet? It's 18 inches wide. The trench, the concrete casing, but the plate is, if I read the plans right, it said eight inches. I think it's 18. Okay. Let's take a look on the plan. Yeah. So if it's only eight inches, there's a problem. And I think the outlet pipe is a six inch pipe. Six inch. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not an engineer. So there's concern about that. Uh, the other thing I'll, I'll raise, and this is unfortunate, because as I said, we had discussions. And the, uh, the issue with the, the entrance before and the proposal last year was that it was directly opposite the driveway at 293. And it was going to be impossible for somebody to back out of their driveway on a, on a weekend with the amount of traffic going in and out of the club plus the traffic bypassing going to the compost. Uh, there was no issue with the curbing out on the Grove Street, defining Grove Street. That never came up in discussion. Uh, the major sticking point, quite frankly, is the location of the, of the building. And it's still a sticking point. And Several suggestions were offered, whether they're feasible or not can be debated, but the, the issue was if you can move the building, you have more flexibility to relocate the entrance uh, for safety reasons and flow of traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when this plan was submitted last week, it, um, it took literally a comment that was made that if you're not moving the building, you can't keep the proposed entrance where it was. And the only alternative, because there is no other place to put it, was in the area of the existing entrance. But there was no, this is probably a misunderstanding on both parties, there was no discussion about removing the curbing or not extending that, that air, the uh, entry exit for that area out to the pro proposed curbing, which would, in theory, put back everything you, you folks said was necessary and needed. But the issue really is the location of the building, which is another meeting. Uh, Can I interrupt you? Sure. Excuse me, but um, the, the, the building, the location of the building is outside of our jurisdiction. Exactly. And, you know, <laughs> whether you move it this way or that, we have right. no, and we I, I, wouldn't. Right, right. I just wanted to, you know, I don't want anybody to be, to be uh, misled that the abutters are happy with this proposal as submitted, and, and, and we're not in agreement with it. But, but just to, to Rebecca's point, you're unhappy with the traffic flow, which is not our, not our jurisdiction. I understand that, but I'm just saying that uh, every, all the discussion this evening about that entrance and the runoff and the comments made that we're holding the exact, effectively the exact entrance to satisfy a butter, not correct. Um, there should, there should, some discussion should continue between the club and the abutters. And I think uh, if there can be a resolution on other issues outside this committee, it may help in the final solution for, your, for handling runoff. Yes. I just, and I just want to throw something out. We lost some imper, uh, pervious, you know, surface. You know, I kind of feel a little gypped myself. But, but it was 
you know, from what I'm hearing, it was to satisfy some of the community. So, you know. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a mis I think, a misunderstanding, uh -huh. something taken literally. And I think, uh, you know, the discussion should continue between Meadowbrook and the and, and I think that, um, as, as Jack mentioned, you, you still have to go back to CPDC. In July. Yeah. So I think there's still a lot of back and forth. So. Um, my understanding is uh, engineering hasn't reviewed this either uh, yet. And, we, we, and, you know, from the discussions we've had tonight, you know that we, we are looking for some more information to review uh, regarding the, the runoff and the capacity of that storm, that trench drain and the uh, rain garden, so. Jack, I, I think you, uh, I, would, I would agree, Becky, I, I think you've got it said. So I would just say, Jack, I do, I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't find it, but I, I now found it. It is, does indicate a eight inch by three foot, so the, the trench, the grading is just eight inches okay. across. Um, so I can look at that. I mean, that's, yeah. I think that's it's typically kind of what I do, back, yeah. but if I had to beef it up, and like I said, that, that's really just an add on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the meat of the drainage for this site is the large infiltration system for the roof area. I'm just trying to provide something um, to satisfy some of the drainage concerns going out onto Grove Street. It shouldn't be a huge sticking issue, I don't think, but, um, because it's really an add-on. I, I could eliminate the trench drain and still meet all my drainage requirements for this site. But I, I know there's been some concern, so I'm trying to address it. But I, I just want to say that for the record. But I will, I'll, I'll, of course, provide the information I can. But really, I don't want to get caught up too much on the trench drain because it's really an added benefit. And it's not something I necessarily even have to provide. Um, but I'll, I'll work with the abutters and everyone on that um, because I do think it's a good feature. And it, it is a steep approach. And there is a lot of runoff that comes off the site on the grove. So I think it would be a benefit. I'll look to improve the design. And I just have, if I may, just one quick question on the subsurface uh, filtration system uh, on the underground tank before. Is the capacity of that larger than the previous underground storage? Um, and if this does reach capacity, is there, is there some kind of relief pipe um, so it doesn't get backed, backed up? I didn't. I, I couldn't find it on the plans. Um, if there's a relief pipe, where does that runoff go? Well, I, I store the entire 100-year storm in there, and sometimes in the lowest downspout, we'll put um, like a TY, so it can it could, it could go over overland if needed. But the entire 100-year storm's stored inside of that system. Um, so it's not like, you know, some systems you say, oh, we handle the 10-year and then anything over goes somewhere else. This will all get stored and infiltrated. It was all over sandy gravels. Um, so the, the previous design just had a rainwater harvesting system and it went out to the rain garden. There was no infiltration besides the rain garden. And it was going to be a 20,000-gallon tank for the rainwater harvesting. But there was concerns in the five months when the club's not operating then the rain garden would take all that water. They, so this is really a, probably a better design, even though I like the idea of providing some rainwater capture for irrigation for the club. But based on engineering's comments, I changed it. And follow up Thank question. You. So the the work that we're seeing here within our buffer zone is really just an improvement that's <coughs> really not needed. That, that's kind of what you said, because we have the trench drain, which you said you didn't have to do. And the reason why we have the rain gun is because we have the trench drain. Right. So you don't have to do either one of those. Right. So it would just be the curbing that would we, we would be here tonight talking about. Right. And I only... I well, but so, Jack, I, I don't know that I agree with that, because like we were talking about before, that paved circle is not being handled. That That's an increased impervious area. That's not being handled by that tank. Right, but right. that paved circle is outside the 100-foot buffer. Okay. So, but that's that's adding the need for the rain garden. It, it's it, it's adding the need to, to provide the infiltration here for the building. So I know I do have an increase of impervious area with this project. Yep. So I need to provide some sort of mitigation for that. Yep. I'm doing that by capturing what's considered clean the roof and putting it into this infiltration. So I I could look up. 
whatever my footprint of this building, I think it's like 5,900 square feet, that entire is being put into the infiltration. So even though we have an increase in impervious, I'm taking out a huge amount of impervious with the roof. I guess my, my point is though, where was that, where was the rain from the roof going before? Uh, that what? Overland. It was just there, going there's, overland. No, there's no system in place now. But so part of that overland was going away from this driveway, right? That not all of that overland was concentrating to this point. So there is an aspect that could potentially increase the flow. Now you're capturing it, which I think is the right idea, but you're, you're capturing it and putting it into the rain garden. But the rain garden is necessary to capture that increase. I see what you're saying. You're saying there could be two design points. There's a design point here, yeah. and there might be water that's coming from the club here out onto Grove Street, yeah. so there's actually two. Yeah. That's a fair point. But we've, we, you, you said you would look at it, and right. you said we would talk about it. I don't think that changes anything that... Right. But the reality is, I, on the existing club, I could look to see where the downspouts go, but they might drain out onto the pavement and out to Grove Street. And, if, and if that's the case, then there's, you're, so you're absolutely move. right. The position right. is right. And right. Yeah. yeah. So I looked, I looked, when I did this study, I looked at our limit of work area, and I just did like a summary of it. I, I didn't look at all 60 acres of the lot because I didn't need to, only what I'm changing. Yep. Um, but I can provide some more detail to the commission on it. Sounds like that's so, the direction we're heading. Is there a limit of work line on this plan for the entrance? Can you show me that dotted line? Yeah, this dotted line is my limit of work line for the club. But so what goes across the entrance? Where is the last spot you're going to touch at that entrance area? The last spot is, yeah, like is right here. See the curbing? Yeah, I see that. Wrap the curbing, end it there. And I see the it, edge right it, there. And then I said, okay, if I'm going to extend the curbing, I might as well bring it right to that catch basin so that we make sure we channel, you know, right now it's just open so that way it gets to that basin, which it's intended to if it needs to. And that's a, is that a deep sump? Cash base. And those were just replaced. I wasn't sure if that was one of the ones that was replaced. I think it was. I think it was. Did the town do some work on that catch basin? Does anyone know? The one right by the club entrance. No. Yeah. No, no, that one was. They did a major job last fall, but that catch basin was not was not uh, changed. Everything is delivered right to the same resource area. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a, just a little bit to the south. No, it's flowing towards the rain garden. There's a catch basin you know, those opposite this way. In the street that go across the street. Those across the street. Yeah, those across the street. The stream. Oh, so that stream goes along the Meadowbrook. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah, we walk in here. So we have a, um, a clause in our bylaw that allows us to look beyond the 100 foot buffer zone if it's going to be more likely that it causes. Um, any kind of harm to the resource area. I don't know the exact wording, but I'm not. I'm not sure about any harm that would be caused if we just let the water flow exactly where it was going before. And, you know, Mike, you're thinking about this more deeply. Do you do you think that there's? I guess I mean, like you're looking. You're looking into the circle, the turnaround. Yeah. And and saying that that's going to cause a problem. Yeah, and, and I think... Is that a, is that a wetland bylaw problem? I think that's a reason that... I, I, I think it's a reason that there's a notice of intent is the... No, this is a... This is an RDA. This is an RDA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think there's... Uh, yeah, tell me why... That's, it's, I'm kind of asking what that circle and all that that increased flow, how is yeah. that tied in to the I, so I don't, bylaw? I, so I think it's it's tied into our bylaw because there's a, a management system that's being in uh, route of uh, overland flow management system that's being installed to manage rain, uh, flow within our system and it's going to direct water into the, the system that's not currently being directed there. I, I think I, I do see an impact to the to the wetland area. I think it's being addressed appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, I I just said notice of intent. I, I don't know that it rises to and like you know but I think we want to be aware of. This. I, mean, I, think, I think what Jack's talking about providing in terms of the differential flow 
of water <coughs> it's is, tough. is going to tell us. It's tough to know how much of a concern it is without knowing more about that detail. Because mm -hmm. if, if this system wasn't in place, it would, it would get there anyways. Correct. But it, I mean, when you, when you look at it, there's two separate areas. There's an area that's basically a stream and everything drops in about in that spot. This is a offshoot, kind of a wetland that dry, and I saw it, it was kind of dry. Um, you know, it was mucky, but it wasn't, it wasn't, there was no surface water. So this would help that a lot to, if it got a more, uh, more active stream of water in that area. But, yeah, you know, I, I think you're right that this does does sort of the by the bylaw extending beyond 100 feet. I think does is for situations like this, right, where you've created a situation upstream <coughs> that's going to have a bearing within our jurisdiction. So I think. Well, that's what I was saying. What's the damage? Is it more likely than not that it has? It's going to create some damage. The only or damage some harm. would be if there's a massive increase in water flow, which I think Jack's calculations are going to show is not the case. <coughs> it wouldn't go to the that wetland per se. It would go down into that down to Grove Street and that catch basin. Mm -hmm. It would cause a bigger flooding problem. It would cause so, a flooding problem. So this and is a in the street. Yes, yeah, so in the street flooding problem, not necessarily a wetlands that's issue. That's correct. But, uh, but you know, I. I so, so, so the, what I was thinking about is, let's, hey, let's take the system out and Jack came in and said, I'm not doing anything, I'm just adding curbing. Then we would probably look at this and say, well, you got to do something, I want you to capture some of that. And he creates this system that we're looking at now, and he gets 75%, 65% of the runoff. I think that that would be acceptable if we approached it that way. So yeah, I'm just saying, let's just... More likely than not, and the fact that we're adding. I think to we're an area trying to come up with the same yeah. thing. We're just getting messed messed up with our bylaws and and the strict semantics. Well, no, I think when it comes right down to it, this trench drain um, is designed to ameliorate the runoff into Grove Street. That's what it's designed to do, and I think as it's designed, it's going to meet that need to a certain extent, but what I don't understand very clearly is where's the threshold that it no longer meets that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand which design storm it is, what what inches of rain for 24 hours or whatever. And I think the rain garden as designed as is, is, you know, because the outlet is lower than the trench drain, the top of trench drain, odds are, even though that's not a big gradient, odds are it's going to likely continue to draw water, even if it's clogged and full. But, um, but the thing is, if the frequency of storms that um, cause problems for the residents um, are, are really not going to be, are, are not really going to be touched by this, if this doesn't even touch those most problematic storms that the residents experience, then it's not, then they're not going to see a difference. And yeah, I think I would feel you know very saying? comfortable seeing a huge trench drain and you know, not <laughs> being an engineer, you know, just the, the, the cover, I would feel comfortable, you know, as just a regular person just looking at that and saying, well, that should work. I think when you see eight inches of a trench chain, I think the questions come from that, and it might calculate out that it, there were, so maybe another one's needed, but. Or whatever. I, but I, would, I would like an engineering check on that. Which I will do, and to add to what you said, Anika, is you're right, if I was only adding a trench drain and a rain garden, and it overtopped in storms, fine, but what, what we're forgetting is I'm adding that infiltration field that's collecting the whole building, so. Right there, less water is going to be moving up <coughs> to Grove Street. The building is now draining to okay. Grove Street. Okay, yeah. so, right, so, the, so the current building right now drains to Grove Street. 
So it's oh, on a hill. It's, so that's yeah, so that's it's on a hill. It's, it's, right. it, there's no literally right. the front half of the building was yeah. going to. So the trench drain is, is it's it, so far the, out of my out of the hundred foot. I'm sort of right. I'm not. So if we were just looking, if I didn't have that infiltration field at all, and I was just yeah. taking all the credit for the trench drain, we might have a problem. I, I probably wouldn't balance the site. Yeah. That so my point is with this infiltration field here. Which is I'm already I'm putting less water out to Grove Street than exists already. today already. Okay. Even if you took the trench drain away in the gotcha. rain away, but I, I wanted to add that feature just because, as, as uh, the abutter stated, it, it is it is a steep pitch coming out to Grove Street. There's there's been some comments made. Engineering's noted it that water sheet flows. The club's aware of it, so we're just yeah. we're trying to come up with something. It's not perfect, but it will it will help, and we're helping it just with that infiltration field as well. Okay. But I will get some information. Obviously, we've talked a lot about it. I'll, I'll get some more information on what the rain garden can handle. Just so, just so we can see numbers wise. What in the trench drain? What, what the trench, you know, the, the water's gonna sh flow down that uh, at a certain velocity, yeah. you know, at a certain height. Yeah. And um, what at what storm, um, is, does that just flow over the grade right through? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if, to, and Jeff, did, did you make you ask that? Jeff, I just I want to read it. It's a summary. <clears throat> no, I'm glad you, I'm glad you restated it because I'm, I'm, like I said, a bigger trench train would be comforting. Yeah, I think it's a good design. I just don't know. I just want to have an understanding of what its limitations yeah, if are. If we put it in, we want to make sure it works. That's all, right? You definitely will want to make sure it works. Right, right. So yeah. I, I can put numbers to that. And then I think Michael and Harry, you, you, is it Harry? I'm sorry. I can't see. Um, I think you guys summarized it right. We should have a view, Jack, and let's make sure we do this. What happens today and what will happen tomorrow? Because I think the differentiation is a key part of this solution that we want to be able to say. What happens to the ring today? What comes down into Grove Street? And then with what we're putting in place between the infiltration system and the drainage, what will that look like tomorrow? And to the resident's point, if, if this is designed to, to operate the way we're hoping it's designed to operate, um, and we're getting certain levels of assurances and evidence that, it, that we can rely on that, um, it will, the infiltration of the roof runoff Will will eliminate that volume of water from going to Gro Grove Street entirely. And that's not an insignificant volume of water, and the rest of it, rest of the water, at least a good portion of it during, you know, the two-year storms, will go, um, will be moved to the wetland, you know, upstream of. Your sheep, and so when this water gets slowed down and infiltrated, it just you you might see instead of seeing a huge overtopping, you'll just see a gradual rise and it'll stay high, but it just won't be such an extreme response to every rain event. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you, exactly. You know, I get it because yeah. what, when rain falls, you still have to you still have the same <coughs> volume of water you have to deal with. Right, dealing and all those steps help mitigate. The, the runoff, the one step that increases the runoff is the is the um, introduction of the granite curbing up the left side of the drive, because today some of that water sheets off into the, the grass cross. area, and now it's going to be That's forced down stuff. through the through the entrance. So, hmm. I, I, just, right I, 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 I was okay. just gonna. I don't know how you calculate yeah, that. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. Yes, but, but no. I, you, you, you're capturing so much of the water. Um, yeah, the, it does channel it, but still you're you're capturing a huge amount of so it. I think it needs to be said, I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm, I, I feel compelled to say it now, that the, the clubhouse isn't the sole source of all the flooding issues in that area. So there's no way that is going to... If if there's a pro this is a low area, it's the <coughs> bottom of the street. Right. No matter what this clubhouse does, it's not going to be solved by 100% improvements in capturing every bit of this water. So, that's all there is to it. Right. Right. And, and 
the town is, is taking steps to, to in, introduce elements to help control the runoff and, and, and the drainage. And I know um, they have more work that they want to do beyond what they did last year. So there's a lot of pieces to fix it. Okay. Move we continue this? I'll second. Idea. All those in favor. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank is it, I know I'm so interested in some questions to answer on the website. Your name is? Oh, Ben Ream, 972 Main Street. Yeah. And I moved here in 2000 from San Francisco. And I'm right near the corner of Maine and Birch Meadow. And, um, you know, in the time that I've been here, I've seen like the water tables go up and not much to go down. I've seen mighty trees fall over. And so I was kind of interested in that. And Are you interested in becoming a member? Yeah, I am. And, oh, great. And, and, um, I when can you start? I, 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 was a, I was a five year member of the uh, Telecom and, uh, Technology Committee here. So I have, you know, so I've been looking for ways to sort of contribute. Um, and I got elected to town meeting as a write in candidate. Um, so. You're talking in. Yeah, I am. Great. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Great. And, um, and I was an English major at UC Berkeley, so I write pretty well. And I was online, and I didn't see a lot of notes that were published this else. year. So Do that seemed like, you know. For conservation? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have somebody to. No, so we, so have we, have to, we have to do them ourselves, so that takes a while. Yeah. But we're also on YouTube, so it's all captured. Okay. Anyway, yeah. so you seem like interesting folk doing interesting things that I'd like to be part of. What's, what are my steps? You. So there is a volunteer. Um, so the the. There's an application. Application the process. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. And if you go to the town website, and, and Chuck may be able to kind of help direct you where. Um, but if you go to the town website, there's a volunteer. It gives you all the open positions, and and currently, there is at least one open seat on the the conservation commission. There will be two. Yep. Yeah. Soon there will be two. Yeah, yeah. well. um, because I, like I looked at, I attended or I audited a climate committee, and I wasn't really. I don't know. This seems, this seems like really interesting, meaty stuff, foundational, if you will. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. all right. So I'll go ahead and fill that out. There's a there is an interview process with yeah. the, the board of selectmen um, or a subcommittee of the board of selectmen, um, and. They, they typically ask you to list which ones you want to do, or if you only want to do one, just list one, or if there's just other Just list opening. the Conservation Commission. Just don't so list times. Anymore. So if you, <laughs> if you list any more. List it three times. Don't bring me, like, somebody to, like, submit me, and then, because that's what I see. No, that's no, not what happens. you don't have to. Just it's, a, it's a separate process that happens independently of the Conservation Commission. You have to contact um, the, I believe it's the, the, the clerk or clerk. Caitlin Saunders for the, uh, who works for the uh, select and, and um, she will direct you. And it's a, it's a uh, application. You fill it out. There's, you tell a little bit about yourself. It's like a resume. Right. And then you pick the three committees and they'll interview you. They just finished up with an interview. Okay. So I'm not sure when the next one's going to be called, but they'll keep your keep you on file and let you know when it happens. And when it does, they'll definitely keep, want to keep meet us you face to face. Too because I, that group doesn't meet often. That's what we're finding out. So we kind of have to push the uh, mm -hmm. selection committee. That was what bummed me out about winning, you know, town meeting. Was I thought, oh boy, you know, I'm really going to contribute to Reading. It's like. You hardly ever meet, you know. Right, so yeah. I like the, the rhythm of like t uh, telecom telecommunication because I felt like on a more regular basis I was helping out. Yeah. So, anyway, I wanted to introduce myself and, and I'll go ahead and check and I'll fill out those forms and and will uh, will I be contacted for an interview or how does that work? Everyone's contacted. Everyone's yep. contacted. Yes. Yeah. If you're a town resident, so uh, if you want to call me tomorrow, I'll come in tomorrow. That would work too. You probably work, but uh, but give me a call yeah. and uh, I can 
just uh, firm up the information I just gave you and make sure that it's correct, and then you uh, can just go through the process. But it, oh, but okay. it's independent of the Conservation Commission, so we won't recommend you or anything like that. It doesn't happen that way. They don't ask us. Okay, so for our input. So under the town website, you can just go to the search bar and just type in the word volunteer, <clears throat> and you can come to this. We should do that. Okay. Well, um, I don't want to be grabby, but like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Is there a way? I mean, I'd, I'd like to become more vested. Like, the there's a process. They they do a volunteer interview, mm -hmm. um, and that's what you were saying. Is they meet. Um, these are other people from other boards that just come and and interview volunteers. Okay. Um, and then, based on that, there's um, you get to appear before the board of selectmen and vote that. board of selectmen. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Say, uh, talk to you a little bit, hopefully, okay. and you know, and see what what your interests are, and um, and then vote, and then that's, you're in. You're in. Okay. Because I, I I did yeah. cover a lot. I got and a dog, and I cover all those areas, and it's like I see these trees falling down, and I see swamps where there not used to be swamps, and it's like, is anybody watching this? <laughs> So I think lot, you, that's what you guys do. A lot of people do. are, but right. I'm happy to have a volunteer. So, um, I would be available to come in tomorrow. Yeah, come on in. Uh, 8 to uh, 5.30. Okay, and you're here in the building? I'm usually in and out all the time, but we're down in the uh, public services department, so it's just straight down the hallway. Okay, yeah. Uh, ben Marie, 972 Main. Thank you. Thank nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Okay. 720 is coming on, and it's a notice of intent 270 06 Franklin Street, 18 Lynetta Lane, Lot 3, Matt 52, Lot 24, 25, Bill Lombard, SL Homes. And um, this is a public hearing, and it is now open and being conducted currently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and is amended in the general. We have in general bylaw section 7.1. Applicant presents a proposal. We will receive uh, comments from the administrator. Um, commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. And uh, we have no public, so I don't really need to talk about that. And um, I'm going to introduce the members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my right. Harry Curtis. Rebecca Longleaf, Chair. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn. Chuck Tironi, Conservation Administrator. So this is for lot three. And lot three, it's number 18, Lynetta Lane. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Sawyer. I'm with Christensen and Sergey. I'm here with Bill Lombard with um, SNL Homes. So what we're here for is a follow-up. This project was permitted and approved, uh, full stormwater, um, low-impact stormwater design. The two homes at the end of, of the road are within the buffer. Uh, so this would be lot three. On the approved subdivision plan, there was a large en envelope shown there. This house is, is smaller than that. The other, the other slight differential is I believe the approved plan had a garage under, so the driveway sloped away. Um, and with this one, the, the driveway slopes back. Uh, I think the driveway is probably slightly smaller uh, than on the approved plan just because of the efficiency of the layout here. And as uh, dictated in the approved plans. We have the Caltech chambers here, where the infiltrator is actually storm tech. They're large chambers. They're, I think, 18 inches high, three feet wide by seven feet long. Um, they hold a substantial amount of water. I think it's about 500 gallons between the two of them. Plus, with the sands, you'll get uh, quite a bit of exfiltration through these, mitigating the, uh, the roof runoff. Uh, so here we have, actually, on the South side, uh, north runs up, uh, up the street, up the cul-de-sac. Uh, here we have the 25-foot buffer here, uh, no disturb, and then the 35-foot no structure. We've maintained the structure outside of, outside of the uh, that buffer, the 35-foot. Um, and these two trees here, I think, as far as uh, on the approved plan, there were two conservation, uh, two trees to be uh, mitigation trees on that lot. Uh, and those are the location of the two trees as as the approved plan that was submitted for the record. Um, so this is just a follow-up for uh, the actual footprint that we're building, and uh, they'd like to get you know get started soon while the good weather's here. Uh, do you have a species of those trees? 
Okay. I do not have the species. Is there any recommendations that the commission would like? Well, you have a list. We have a list. Native, native trees and. Yeah. I I think a couple of red maples out there would be nice. That's if we could just condition it to red maples would be. And they they're pretty. Um, you'll have success when growing those. So it's it's uh, kind of an open space. So yeah, I, I think that would the, work. Is this the lot? We were out there today. As you go down the um, cul-de-sac, is that one to the right? Just, just the after the one that's being framed? It's off to the left. left, yes. On the left, actually. If you oh, it's on the left. Yeah. On one, then. Yeah, uh, let me draw it back and we can see where it is. Hold on, I guess. Yeah. Can you see how it is now? I need Harry over here to help me. Actually, I got a, one of the, this was, this was actually with the, submitted as part of the record. Right. So it's, it's this one down here. Oh, okay. Mm. So it's right okay. behind the mound, the big mound. Yeah, uh, I believe there's a stockpile. Where's the stockpile? Yeah, the stockpile. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. There's two piles there. Yeah. So you can actually see the stakes. The stakes were put in place. But yeah, we saw the stakes, but nothing. You've got the mound and then. Yeah. 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 Okay. So more or less where the mound you saw would be the mound. Yep. Yeah. And I believe the. Conservation trees, I believe, are two and a half inch. They require to be two and a half inch caliper. Three inch caliper, three. ten to fifteen feet tall. Yeah. So you be three inch, okay? Because I think I. It's, it's on our policy. Oh, it's on our policy. Two point five. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's two point five. There's two and a half. Well, I just talked to the guy that wrote it, and uh, it is. I thought it was five. three. Yeah, but. Uh, it's two point five. Trust each other. We'll check. Could um I I think it's okay. So Lynetta Lane was an approved NOI for the development and then the footprint of the houses. For the cul de sac and and the drainage um system, which is a little different. So the intent of this is to show what's actually being proposed. Yes. A true footprint of the building, a true layout of the, the structure that you're putting out there. Um, and, and just so that it hasn't changed from what we previously approved, uh, like, the, but they, they do submit a new NOI. They, do, uh, I'm just. Oh, the, I'm the, just ho the houses in within our jurisdiction had to file notices of intent. It, and that's what this is. That, okay. Yeah. It's it's typical in a definitive subdivision that if you have fee simple lots of these lots, you convey them out. Yeah. Um, any lot that is within a buffer, you have to come back. You you have the overall for the subdivision road which once the road's complete and before the town accepts, Bill will have to come back to get a certificate of compliance for the road. Um, but as the lots lots get built, before he can sell a lot, he'll have to come in and get the certificate of compliance for each lot to make sure it's built per plan. Mm -hmm. so, um, so when this, so this is for this house. So, yes. so besides these trees, what's the vegetation gonna look like? Uh, it's, it'll be typical, it'll be lawn, mowed lawn. Um, I imagine shrubs, uh, some shrubs up the front and, you know, typical home vegetation. Um, I think I'd like a little bit more detail on this plan for that, to sort of state that. Um, and is the 35 foot buffer going to be vegetated? Or the 25 foot going to be fully vegetated? Where's the extent of so, the lawn going to go to? Uh, the lawn, we'd, we'd, I'd imagine we'd extend it to the, um, to the 25. To the 25? Yeah. To the is there going to there gonna be a fence at that, at the, at the 25? Are there going to be Chuck. posts or signs Inches. or? Um, is, there a, is there a requirement? Is there a requirement in the town? For um, typically, we ask for... Um, granite or concrete bounds at a certain what, 40 foot? Maybe 40 feet and then turning into 40 intervals. feet and at turning points um, so that they become, you know, do, do not disturb areas. Natural vegetated buffer between you know, different people's space and, and the wetland. I think. We go with the bounds versus a fence. Yeah. Some people, some people put a fence. Some people. So these are the ones that you, they, um, 
they they uh, they stick probably about three feet above grade, or are they just set flush like six inches above grade? They can. I've seen a variety across okay. town. So, right. um, I mean, the bottom line is wh whenever the person, uh, the homeowner, takes over the property, it would be really good if something was visible mm -hmm. so that they knew, you know, this is a jurisdictional area. It's kind of a no-go no, no -go zone with leaves and debris and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You so, know, so I kind of think something more obvious is like a better so let me just thing. define that so. they're not going to be flush unless this was a project that was on uh, existing lawn so since you're putting on uh, you're putting it up against kind of an area that's supposed to be zone of natural vegetation and it was a field before they have to be at least six inches above the ground two feet in the ground so that's that's the requirement you can go a foot above the ground. I've seen them three feet above the ground. That doesn't what, what are they at an artist? <laughs> what, what were the ones? Are they just a foot above? Those are like six inches. The one at uh, the one at artist was just six inches, oh. and I and I think it's that shows up yeah. quite turns up yeah. Yeah. enough. Yeah, they they can't mow past that. It's, yeah, it you know it's got it can't be flush because. And we I mean, give one of the reasons why we'd have it flush is so you can mow over it, and this is not a place where it happened. And and then on the top of those, we give you folks um, those little signs. Yeah, a little that you so just glue on. Glue on. Your yeah. Epoxy them on the top. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this could be a four by four granite. It can be concrete or granite. Concrete or granite. Okay. It, it actually says it in the order. So. And, and is this deck going to have stairs coming off it? Yes, it will. Okay, going, so on to, going on to, if you're looking at this plane, it'll be going off the left hand side. Okay, so away from the wetland. Correct. Okay. Um, and the grading, what's the steepest slope there to the, between the infiltration area and the 35 foot? Uh, what's the steepest grade? It de it definitely, it's, it's flatter than a three to one, I can tell you that, uh, actually. I think it's about a foot of elevation. Uh, it's three to one. So between the 90 and the 88 contour, it's the steepest at a three to one. So this here. That'd be three to one, then it flattens out. Because uh, this is a two foot, six feet between the two. There's a two, two and thirteen and a half. That's not too bad. Right? It's not very steep. No, it's mm -hmm. not. It was just the steepest lines I saw. So I yeah, and that's only two feet, so you get uh, a three to one here, and then it's flat, a, a flat front yard. Um. So. Are you gr holding back the grading because of our jurisdictional lines there? Is that, or is that, a, is that an issue for you guys, or is, is it steep like that, or? Um, well, we could we can actually pull this around and flatten it out even more. Yeah, you know, if that's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah, you could you could extend that way out. That's, and so it's something to think about now because what we find a lot of times is somebody puts this line and then we go out there and say, "But you filled all the way out to here," and it causes an issue after the fact. Yeah. No, we can flatten. That. Yeah, so the, so the extent of fill is going to basically be where? What's the well, limit of fill? So we, we tie in, it's hard to see on this one here. Can you pull that up, Chuck? Yeah. Or, or actually what I'm going to do, is, so this is a fill here. We only have, if, you, if we can chase this contour around or, or we can start. So this is 88. We have an 87 contour, so this is only... This is only a foot of fill here, so we tie in basically just beyond this contour here. Um, if you wrap around here, it ties in over here. So this this is a fill. 
but it's very slight. This is a this is the 87 contour. This is an 88 contour. So really, it, it, it's, it's minimal minimal earthwork, minimal filling there. Um, you end up with a little. We do ramp up here. So here's the 87, and here's a 90 contour. So right. as we as we run up to the back of the cul-de-sac, there is some filling. That's a three foot. Um, so we have 94 here. And in front of the house, it's an 88, so there is six feet of fill uh, right in front of the house here. Right. So I'm just wondering, so why so much fill? Just because of the road contour? Well, road because contour. Road elevation? Well, the other thing you need to do is you need to keep your basement elevation two feet above uh, seasonal high groundwater. So that's your, your homes are lifted up somewhat. Um, your, your basement. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a walk up. Yeah, it's really it's uh let's see top of foundation's ninety six. Uh no. No, it's not a walk-up. There is some light and air in the back here, but not a walk up. So I guess as far as additional planting detail, typically, you know, Bill, Bill won't get into that, you know, as far as the planting the shrubs around, are you going to want as far as species and such or? Yep, species, location, number. So w before, we just want to ask a question. Yeah, we, so this was a site that had minimal trees cut down um, on it. So. How many replacement trees did you, you needed two on each property or something like no, that? No, this, this one only needed two. And, and the, I believe and the next one, and the next one has nine. Has nine. Yeah, so this, yeah. So they're, they're kind of meeting. Lot by lot. They're meeting that. So are you proposing nine trees on the other one? And yes. You're not going to do. So, you know, I just want to say that, you know, we usually ask for a planting plan where they're going to use shrubs. But they're we haven't asked before before so I guess what I'm just saying is to have an understanding to sign off on an order of conditions and go out there and say like like I look at this and I don't know what the ground cover look, is supposed mm -hmm. to be when I just look at this plan right here in front of me so I need some sort of description of is the it ground cover he's saying is, is grass it's right on. But so it's up, to, yeah, right right to up to what point? You know, up to the 25, up to the wetland line. So, you know, some up sort of... Up to the 25, you were going to put the bounds, and you know that beyond those bounds, you can't... It's got to be natural vegetation, and you can't mow. Right. Yeah, so he has the 25... He has the hay bales there now. You're not right. going to do anything from the back of the hay bales. No. So what it is is what it is. And he's met the replacement policy with the two trees, and I think the only condition that we can put on at least this lot, I, I think, is that what's inside the 100 foot has to be native as far as whatever yeah. plants for shrubs around the house yeah. within that 100 foot. And do we need to see a plan? You know, that's up to you guys, but I, I, I think that we Just some sort of description of, like, you know, what it's going to be. I, d I didn't see it in... I guess that would say, I, I, th I feel like we don't typically get, you know, if it's just housing, you know, stuff right around the house, I don't think so. Where I would want a planting plan is if there was going to be a row right along the wetland, or if, it, if the, but if it's just, if they're just doing, but I, I agree with you, yeah, we want condition. native, yeah. we want a condition that it's native, but I don't know that I need to see something if it's, if it's just stuff around the house, as long as we know that they've got on here what's required for the replacement. Right, I and, like and I think they're meeting our yeah. tree replacement yeah. policy, and I don't necessarily have to, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel right saying that it absolutely has to be native. You know, I think what they plant is, is what they plant, and they, we have met, they have met our requirements for, for replacement. Well, we need to make sure that it's not on the banned list. So, and then, so, <laughs> so one way to do that is to make sure that it's native. It's native. Yeah. No, no, it's a wetland. Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Well, native is good. There's plenty to choose from. I, whatever. 
continue. But when you Chuck, you, are you now talking about the trees that are going to be planted? No, you said no. we're, we're talking, we're talking, talking about, about the uh, uh, just whatever. Just the level plant, of plant out in front of the home. Yeah, that's. I, I don't typically show that on a, a you know a foundation planting plan, and, and it's not typical for me to provide that level of detail. Yeah, I think I don't. Uh, I, I, don't, think need that, it. I uh, don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. Harry hasn't. But he, I'm not really concerned about a few shrubs in the front of the house. I think it's okay. Okay, so the only thing that comes up is sh should they be native or you don't, do you not care at all? I mean, Becky said she didn't care whether they were native or not. They said they should be native in the 100 foot. Well, I would prefer natives. No bomb trees. Even though. 100 foot, I think they should be native. All right, so it's going to be native, but we don't need a plan. Okay. okay. And I, and I have a list. Chuck has a list. I guess can. I'm in violation of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I have two. Darn it. Well, I'm not Your grandfather near wetlands. Is. Did you, did Actually, you do that I this do year? I do have Ilex fertisolata. I don't know what, what that is. Wintergreen. <laughs> Wintergreen. It's native. Yes, it has a wetland. And I planted it. I went to a nursery again. And I get a lot of flack for it. <laughs> I eat planting is, natives. Is there anything? Else, uh, again, I'm just confirming based on the, the previous NOI. Is there anything else that was held for this property? Uh, I know there was some agreement with land. This has nothing to do. This is not near that area. Um, actually, the, yeah, the, it's actually on the next lot. Um, there's the easement to access the, the, the land. And yeah, which is actually the easement is, is right here. Are we looking for more information on this plan? I don't think so at this point. Okay. I think we hit all the. So is the easement in this, on this? It's on lot. No, it's on the next lot. On, on the next lot. Yeah. Okay. So what we would do with the COC plan, we'd show, we, what we would do is set those bounds on the 25 foot, three, uh, four by four bounds, six inches, between six and, I'll say between six and 12 inches above grade um, at the, what was that, the 40 foot? 40 foot increments that way, or it, or it bends, it, it returns, and it bends, yeah. okay. And it's going to say that in the order of conditions. It's on the order of conditions. It's on the order, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, it, there's a question then, does it need to show that on this plan, because lots He doesn't of need to show the bounds on this plan, he shows it on the as-built plan. as -built. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah on the as-built. Um, I'm going to ask Dave's question, unless you want to. Fine. Uh, we have a picture of this, um, downspout and runoff uh, infiltration detail mm -hmm. and he was wondering about the sediment sump and if that needed a inspection port or just explain why it doesn't. Uh, we, it's yeah, similar to, it's very shallow, similar to a D-box. So, or it is a D-box. So, uh, what you do is you just dig it up, you know, instead of having a, a cover at grade, uh, they're very small, you dig it up inspect it and remove any sediment, put the cover back and the sod back on it. Oh. You'd, need, you'd have to be, we'd have to provide swing ties to it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, how, where would you, how, who would know where it was? Homeowner would have to, the homeowner would have it, that record. It needed to be on the asphalt. And, and be on the asphalt plan. And how long? It's similar to, you? it'd be similar to, I don't know, with the septic. Um, I have that in Maine. Yeah, I, have yeah. To, I had to I have to find it. I had to have a little diagram. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, as Maybe part of there were a piece of metal taped to the attached yeah. to the top of it so you could find it. Yeah. So as part on the on the COC on the certified plan, there'll be swing ties from a swing tie from the building to that look uh, that structure, the location of it. And how often do they have to clean it? Is there a? I typically. Um, I typically don't provide it because it's clean water. <laughs> it comes from the roof, so there's no sediment in it. Um, this, you know, this may have been come from a detail, a standard detail that might have been picking up some driveway runoff. But roof water is is, is clean. There's no sediment. It wouldn't get clogged with leaves. They you have the, you have your screen in your you got you your screen at the top of the gutter. So. Oh. So is that, a, is that a, a requirement that there's the gutters have screening? It's a typical gutter installation. You have the, the screen at the top. Is there an O&M plan for that? Uh, there was an O&M for the uh, chambers as part of the original order. Okay. Um, the yeah, original I know order. it was one in the order of conditions yeah. too. This is, you know, check it. Yeah. Uh, we refer to your O&M plan. Um, I 
say I don't expect any home owner to be doing that. It's, it's in the yeah, they're pretty much made. <laughs> I, I, it's buried, it's buried. I mean, how they're impressive not, often would that ever fill up with a gutter? I mean, yeah, so we do have the inspection. You're not the only people. person in the world. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I had to oh, get yeah. my yeah. septic. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have the inspection point here for your septic. Okay. It's really just leaves. I mean, I know you said sediment, but in another meeting that it was like, it was a big concern, and there was a lot of trees around the house. Yeah. And they went with, this product called gutter helmet to make everyone feel better about no leaves in there and then it kind of took the entire question whether it would fill up with you know leaves break down too I mean oh, yeah. you do gutter cleaning there's no, a yeah, there's there is muck that, in it's, there it's a mucky stuff yeah. so I guess if the mucky stuff were to wash through that's where it would maybe it would uh, so anyways that's up. that's what they did I know that's yeah. I don't know if it's five times more expensive but it's but it was a way that that what do you want to go that to house? No, well, no, no, it's not being asked for here, because the trees are basically overhanging no, this other house. So, yeah. So I clean my own gutters, and I know how much mud gets in them. Yeah. Mostly from between leaves and just. Oh, absolutely. I, I go up and hold mine out. Yeah. So. It would be nice if there was like something for the homeowner to say. Here's how it works, and. Uh, it's yeah. gonna fill. I mean, if this was on my house, it would fill up in one year. Yeah. It just because I got neighbors with big pine trees, the pine needles blow mm -hmm. in, uh, they decompose on the roof from time to time. Some of the gravel from the roofing. Um, I think this is a fine plan. I just think it'd be nice to let the homeowner know that um, mm -hmm. you see water coming out the overflow pipe. It means you need to go clean the box yeah. Yeah. or something. Direction of uses or something. Yeah, yeah I guess it's with the with the the, uh, the COC, we could uh, on that plan could be a, an O and M for that structure, swing tie, and an O and M on the COC that the homeowner would get. That's about all you could. It's really the only surety you can we, give. We, we'd have to ask for that now. We can't add something to the certificate of compliance, compliance. request. Yeah, so. It, if, if if you thought that it, it needed to be added, uh, you know, it would be great if there was just like a, a condition that you have to have like a strainer, you know, the thing you put in the downspout. I don't know if you think those work or not or some screening or, or something, but it's kind of th thinking out loud because when they, when they actually flush this system, what you're showing there, it, it doesn't automatically jet out all the all the chunks it's, it's just going to go straight through so if someone actually cleaned their gutter and typically when people clean their gutter they pull out the big stuff and then hit it with a hose it cleans off what falls on the house and then it just makes the gutter you know absolutely clean and that's all going down so and it's just some thoughts I just yeah. you know it's, I don't want to make a federal case out of it yeah I know it's, it can be it can be dug up it can be fixed um, <coughs> Okay. So, any further questions? Uh, move we continue the notice of intent. So we have a drafted. Do you have a drafted order? No. Uh, I don't have a drafted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So continue the next meeting. I make a motion to continue. Eighteen. Are you did? Oh, yeah. second. Sorry. You second. I'll second. All those in favor. So do you, do. You do we, I know this always comes up. Do you anticipate any further questions for the applicant or his engineer? Okay. Typically, we would close the hearing and then draft the order because that would let them know that, you know, would make the applicant understand that there's no more questions that we would receive from them and he wouldn't have the burden of bringing his engineer. So, so you could consider closing, too. No. Does anybody want to? You okay with that? I'm fine with that. Sure. I make a motion to close. I'll okay. second. So rescind the All first motion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So do you, you understand that process? Okay. We're on to Notice of Intent 270-0700, 48 Franklin Street, 
lot four. Map 52, lot 24, 25. Um, and uh, the public hearing is now open and is conducted under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. And the hearing is conducted in the similar manner as the previous notice of intent. And um, we introduced ourselves, so I'm going to let you. All right, um, similar to the, the other lot, this is the, the, the footprint that will be constructed. Uh, similar features. Now, this was originally permitted as a drive, actually uh, a drive under. And so this continues in that manner where the, the driveway slopes down and you uh, drive into the garage. Your garage is at 8775 and your uh, basement floor elevation is one is a step above that, four inch step above that. Um, so the roadway does slope down, two car garage, similar to the other. We have the, the infiltration chamber systems here. Um, and we do have the the conservation planting. This was from this these locations are from the exact um, exact location from the, the plan is submitted uh, this plan that was submitted as part of the record uh, with the original notice of intent for the uh, for the for the subdivision uh, this couple like this one will probably have to slide it's right on the edge of the pavement we'll have to slide it a little bit but we can easily fit it in but as you can see we we maintain the integrity of the of that planting the tree replacement uh, planting um, and the access easement here so that 10 foot wide access easement, easement is placed uh, so that actually is that large area of open space or land that's conveyed uh, like I said does that get I think it's an easement held uh, by the Conservation Commission uh, the large land area back here uh, this easement will get recorded and granted prior to a certificate of occupancy of this house um, I think that's part of the requirement in the order conditions with that. Uh, I think that basically covers this lot, similar, uh, similar to the other. We have the 25-foot no disturb, 35-foot no structure. The house is well away from that, uh, from the struck from that. The pavement is uh, probably about 40 feet. Uh, so uh, we maintain the integrity of, of both the no disturb and no structure. Good yeah, question. If no one else does, I do. so I, I would just you know, different from the last site. I, I guess I would like to see or understand the planting plan a little better on this one because there is a significant amount more replacement. Um, I, I would like to know what you're planning to replace with, and then why to just. Put it on the locations that you've got there. You know, I, I'm looking at particularly the ones right by the lot four, right? You know, I, I assume that's all going to be the grass lawn area, right? I, yeah. I see a homeowner coming in and being like, well, why did a tree get planted right here where I want to have space? Yeah, I, I'd like to make sure there's whatever get, goes in there is, has some thought that the homeowner's not going to be coming back to us and saying, I, I'd like to do this. Well, if you, I mean, we could, I agree with you. Yeah. We could take that word. One is a number four, slide it down. Yeah. 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 Makes yeah. Sense. yeah. 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 I, I, I think when, um, it, I think they, the plant locations were just brought forward from the original mm -hmm. permit plan. Yeah. So we've uh, been asking that a, uh, uh, someone expert, landscape architect, or bio, um, botanist look at the plan and tell us that they're not going to get crowded out. And I just want to also bring to your attention that you do not need to keep the trees above the 35-foot line. You have access to your entire property. It's a zone of natural vegetation, and a native tree would be fine to plant back there if there was a spot. Okay? Sure. And I think there's ways 
with that in mind, I think this is one, you know, where the last one was just two trees, I think there's ways that you can really think about where these get planted that makes sense for the, where the homeowner's going to have, what makes sense for protecting that wetland. And All right. Um, so just to clarify, so right here we're saying that the trees are outside the 35 foot no structure. Can they get, can we actually, if with minimal disturbance, could we plant them inside the inside the 25 so between so in this in this area in here you can and if you get really close you got to make sure they're they're they can uh, survive and yeah. with their roots wet yeah. uh, so as you're gonna have to pick this be a little more careful with the species that's why I said yeah. someone needs to look at this and but you have an opportunity to plant them anyways plus we you can do trees and you can do two shrubs for each tree and you can add your shrubs that are going around the house as those two shrubs, as long as they're in, as long as it's in the hundred foot. So you you could lessen the amount of trees by adding two shrubs for each tree you eliminate, as long as it's native, and it also has to be in the hundred foot. I said that twice. Is this is this lot the area that right now is kind of flat and back? Yes. And and you've, it it's all all dirt. Yes. Yeah. So. Aren't there mature trees in that? 25 foot. Yeah, 25 foot. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So you, you know, you might not have an area to plant those trees yeah, right yeah. in it because well, of the road system. A plan that someone, the, yeah. the yeah. Landscape landscape system, will tell you we'll, yeah. it's already there. Yeah. Someone to kind of come up with. Well, and, um, and, I mean, I think the shrub uh, replacement, Chuck, doesn't that only pertain to the tree policy? And wasn't this specifically asked for trees to be planted? I'm just asking the question. No, I think this is, isn't this uh, nine trees? Because this one was as part of the... It's a separate NOI. Yeah, so as part of the original right, NOI, right. There, was, there was supposed to be nine trees planted on this lot. Right, so I don't it. think this, the cool. shrub substitution but, is, is applies but, if, if they've asked for that. Our tree replacement? That's our tree replacement policy, but this was a pre-planned NOI where <clears throat> it was kind of predetermined that there would be trees. Yeah, but I, I guess I personally interpret that as, as it's meeting the same intent of our tree replacement policy where not one tree well, is one tree. You're not going to get more bang for the buck by just crowding in some trees. It yeah. looks like well, it doesn't true. work. Yeah. So well, we need so some relief and we're trying to say put some plants there, some shrubs, and if you incorporated what you're putting around the house, I mean, because well, here's gonna, the thing: I don't want to see work. all the trees gone. You know what I mean? Well, you, yeah, we could come back and, you know and say we okay. would like a certain amount of trees. Now I get that. You want to turn it into Shrubville? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'd you like to see some there. of the trees. Been there, been there. Yeah, it's I'd like not to a good see some place. of the trees put back. Um, <laughs> um, but but uh, to Chuck's point, I think it makes sense to have somebody who knows all the trees and knows the 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 light um, and the the water ability, you know, the water capacity of the soil. Well, the trees next to the driveway are not going to ever work out. No, I mean, and the ones near the yeah, infiltration, so I've got concerns about it because those circles are 10 foot And this doesn't incorporate diameter, so th the existing trees, which so are root mature. Zone, so those ones near the infiltrator, the root zone, if that tree gets bigger than 10 feet round, it's going to go into the infiltrator and rest that up. So, well, it, so I think some appropriate... Some long term planning. I, I think okay. what I'm you're hearing is. I get the gist that you want to a little, some more thought put into the mitigation trees. Yeah. yeah. Got it. How, how big is that? Is the. Um, it, it's a, um, a garage under? Correct. Yeah. How many bays? Two. Is there any way that you can cut the. The, the piece that comes out, uh, it seems like a lot of asphalt. Is that for, for turning your yeah, parking cars? For when you pull out, it's called a hammerhead. So when you back yeah. out of your garage, you back into that area, and then you straight up. Yeah, on the original, actually, the on the original plan, there was actually quite a long driveway with the hammerhead that actually pulled, actually went and protruded towards the 35-foot the 25 foot notice to right. so it's similar you know it's, it's a similar type of um, setup 
Right. You originally had the hammerhead, just, just backing straight out of the garage where those, you see those two trees. Yeah. Then we took the hammerhead and we set it this way here as you see it now. Uh, is this aquifer protection district? No. No. It's not there. The hatch is asphalt, right? Or concrete or... A bit, yeah, this is a driveway. Yeah. yeah. So going around the cul-de-sac, there's a sidewalk. Yep. That's what's inside of the... Si that right there. The sidewalk stops to the right side of that garage. Okay, that, it does. That, that, yes, it does. Okay. And then you continue with a grass strip after that on the other side. All right. So do we have, as far as the easement goes, do we have anything, I mean... Uh, they're not blocking, but is there any requirement that uh, we, we maintain the, that it looks like an easement, or uh, was there anything? I don't remember. Did the trailer committee do that? Like right now, you, you, and I'm not saying it was part of it, but right now you're going to go out there and you're going to be like, where is the easement? How, how do you know? So, I'm, trying think, I'm trying to think when we went out when it was, nothing was there. Was it easy to see the ax, the easement? I don't think we, I don't know where it was. Well, I asked for easement language, and I was, I, it said there was a, that we were going to get it later on. And then this was coming in, and I think we're still waiting for easement language and to find out, you know, what we're getting. I mean, whether they show us where it is or the town engineer and our survey crew show us where it is that's not an issue I mean because we've got it no matter yeah, we, what. we have people that can do that as far as you know turning it into a kind of like what at Kylie Drive where we're gonna we're gonna have that that was never discussed so that's that wasn't part of what, what we made an agreement with here okay. so that would be up to the town in my opinion Although I think it needs to be said that we're going to put some sort of sign. Maybe there. I misunderstood. Like, we have like a four. We didn't like have an pole. access there before, right? We did not. We just had conservation land back this way. Right. Well, no, back and over. We weren't. Yeah, we had this nothing was private this property. Okay. Yeah. This is all private, right? So there was no agreement mm -hmm. for for a you know stone path, mm -hmm. cul-de-sac. Well, not cul-de-sac, but a kiosk parking spots this was just here's the easement it's up to us okay trails committee like that but there wasn't a restriction on a on a sign excuse me we're going to be able to put up a sign oh. cool. yeah what, so four by four post or something you know, the easement it's, gonna be, it's gonna be neon i think yeah <laughs> right on that's that's led Sometimes they put up kiosks. Ticks, free ticks. Is it is a kiosk acceptable? I don't know why we would want one there. Yeah, I mean, I guess I wanted to make sure we didn't have a situation like Kylie Drive where we need something big enough to show the trail. I mean, that would show that something like that would show where the trail is and where you can and can't go. So. That's, that's probably what we're shooting for when the when the language comes in that we're we're allowed to put up a sign. Phil was supposed to Phil never give you back that language. You never. We have we have nothing discussed. That's why I don't know if you guys want to see something with this. So yeah, you're semi retired because yeah. we have to review it before we issue this any certificate of compliance. Right. So I don't know if you want. And I actually said this to somebody. I said you want to like get this going now, or you want because you're you're rushed to get started now. I get that, but you're also rushed when we're doing certificates of compliance to sell the property. So no, we're just at it. that point it's, right yeah. now. This will be a little more complicated with the easement language. It's not a simple plan that'll have to be in place to convey the uh, plus four. So you're still yeah. thinking certificate of compliance for that? Um, well, I would think that we. Oh, you want to start it now? Well, I don't think we want a contingent for the order conditions for this, but I think we'll put a fire under it and start working with you on the language. And at least, you know, as far as there's no reason we couldn't be working through the easement language just on general business, could we? Yeah. Okay. So and that's reviewed by the out. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's not going to be there's just going to be an easement, 
and it's, it's just the availability to have a sign. That's, that's all I see. You know, it's, it's under the care and custody of the Conservation Commission that will allow our people to take care of it. And, we, and the only thing I see is that we just need someone somehow to note that it's there. I mean, as long as you agree to both those things, that, that's fine. I can, one thing I could, I know we're coming back with this plan, so I should, I can put a note to say um, access easement trail mark. Yeah. Um, Typically our, our trails are just kind of dirt. <laughs> we don't do much. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the DPW allows us to put down gravel, or they bring gravel in for us to do that. Um, what are you asking, Chuck? What are you asking for again? I mean, the sign isn't a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Me to build that? No, 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 no. I'm just asking. I'm throwing <laughs> things out there to make sure that you're okay with us doing. What's going to look? What it's going to look like? And, and and with what it looks like, is there anything like? So my thought with it is <laughs> at Kylie Drive. <laughs> I mean, they were doing the part of the trail, but separate from that, what they wanted to do to cr create some separation from this dirt path or gravel path, they put some plantings right along that easement. Uh, it, it helped create some separation. Buffer it. Yeah, basically buffer it. I was just saying, you know, we're, here's the, like some stone. we're in total care and custody of whatever happens on that easement. That's great, because that allows us to put the sign up and to do whatever we want. If you agree with that, then that's fine. That's, that's all I need. Anyone the one that even is fine with me. No. Okay. We gave you the land out back. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Right. I just connected your whole world there. You can go all the way over to jump the other side and make 60 acres and walk right around. I had a question. Next to the driveway, there's sort of a shaded part. Yeah, what's that? retaining wall? Yeah. Because... It's the, the roadway goes down, so... This drives under, you're, you fill, it, it's filled here, so you drive under the, the building. You don't want a big exposed face of foundation at the front, front of the building. So Plus it also helps contain the water from yeah. so this level that you'll wash your yeah, I see yeah. the nine still up into the ground. I was thinking that was 88, mm -hmm. from, right, that's the existing. Yeah. Do you see the need for uh, a trench drain Near the the um, near the garage at all? I don't no. see when they. Cause it's it's sloping away. This is up at okay. Uh, garage is you know garage is at eighty seven seventy five, and this will just slope uh, just slope slightly away from the garage. Uh, we don't like to uh, we like to make sure we grade away uh, from the garage. You get, you get the whole house going into Caltex. Designed wall four foot three foot. So it's just, just the, I think it's four, four or five. So do we need design plans for that retaining wall? Is it? No, it's not us. us. Do, do we need to ask for... Is it plans? over three feet? Is it over four feet? No. Then, so usually it's a landscape feature. Any more questions? Did, um, Harry, did you get the answer? That you're capturing all the roof front off into the... Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. So, yeah, similar to the other, we have... Two, two Coltex on the corners. Yeah, yeah. Just tool. Yep. Um, um, so, <laughs> so, sometimes when we've got such a steep paved area, we do have like a trench drain along the driveway though. We want something? Do you think that's this actually not very. This this isn't a steep driveway. But no, it's only. Isn't it going like a six foot drop over? This? No, we this only. Doesn't look like there's a walkway to the front door. Uh, hold on a sec. We have a it's taller than a Mike Flynn. I think. Now we have. So you access the house. What's this? Eighty. Taller than a truck. Eighty-eight. Ninety-two. Ninety-two. So it goes down four feet. Four that's feet like. in. Four feet in, fifty-five feet. Five. Uh, I didn't show that in the tunnel yet. Yeah. This one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So for the eight percent, I think. That's right. 
I think it's a right. little bit less. That sounds good. So it's a, that's like a, it's like a handicap ramp with rails. So there's no front walkway for this house? There is no front walkway. That's a very good point. Intentional or access from the garage? No, just not on the plan. Yes, there should be a front walkway. Intentional or access? So, I'm sorry, 7%, 90%. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> What I would probably do, since you brought it up, is the point. The front door is here. Yeah. Here. Oh. Stairs, right? stairs coming up. Yeah, yeah. typical house. Yeah. 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 Stairs coming up from the driveway? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. From the, yeah. There's no sidewalk. Oh. So uh, come mm -hmm. up and come around. Because that's a grass, that's a grass strip. Sidewalk yeah. stops. Yeah. Continues all the rest as well. Good catch. Do you look better with the side the walkway up front? No. Yeah. That's really standard traffic at the garage. You know, whenever you have that wall next to the garage like that, you can do three steps up or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're looking for some additional information. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would make a motion to continue this one and uh, the additional information we're looking for. Yeah. This is we won't close one. this one. No. Correct. Do we have a planting plan stamped or by a certified yeah. landscape architect? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Certified landscape architect. Or, or, could it be a botanist? Botanist. botanist or environmental consultant? Uh, could we, yeah, oh yeah, well, you use, yeah. uh, what's his, I forgot his name, what's the guy? Uh, yeah, Kurt Young. Kurt, 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 Young. Kurt Young. So, yeah, Kurt Young could put this together if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Well, they can do that or landscape architect, I think. I know a bunch. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't hurt to do that. Do it clean. Yeah, we'll go with the landscape architect. I mean, it's, that's what we have to do. And uh, I guess the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. And I would add the sidewalk. I would add the sidewalk to the plan. Yeah. Yep, add the sidewalk. Okay. Walk walk coordinate walk these way. nine tree locations. Okay. Thank you. So a lot of those trees that they're like the two red oaks or the two red maples that I said, they they tell you that you need like 25, 30 feet in between them. So. So when you, you have you have a list. Is that? You have a list. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you were getting a landscape architect, you just tell them native trees, and this is the parameters where sure. what we can use, and of course she'll come up with something great. So I have a list. I'll email it to you. So there is a motion. Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll is second. there a way? Um, yeah. Is there a way that a draft order could be ready for the next meeting? So if we could yeah. close it and get the yeah. I'll, I'll okay. get them both as close as possible. Okay. If you can get me the material, I'll put yep. it into the document list yep. as soon as I get it. And the commission can review it. You're going to need to get us the material at least a week before the meeting anyways. So you only have a week, really. Yeah. So when's the next meeting is? 27th. 27th. Okay. Yep. Don't feel like I'm going to retire. So the other one will be, so the other one should be an issue. No, if yeah. you run into a problem, you could continue this one. But if, yeah. if not, then well, yeah, we'll shoot to, one. We'll, shoot, we'll yeah. look to get that information in um, within the week by, ne by next uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. All those in favor? So um, Mike, you continued, and who seconded? Harry. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. All right, folks, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Who's this? Uh, <clears throat> Chuck Five Dean Road. Board of Conditions. Yeah.
somewhere. I did uh, have a phone conversation with Mr. Crocker, and uh, we felt like it was it was it was fine. We just verbally went over the order. Did you send this one? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Please take the time to review it. Yeah, I understand, as, as you all know, I wasn't at the last meeting. Uh, I understand from Mr. Crocker that um, you've eliminated the need for erosion control and you did not ask for any uh, mitigation of planting of any kind. There's no erosion control? This site, uh, we're the... I wasn't here last meeting, so I'm sorry. So we're the... Um, uh, and I can pull up this, this screen anyways. We didn't ask for erosion control because because the apron of that pool was like this and the wetland was over there so all the work was here so it would go right. that way mm -hmm. and the wetland was what, about, what was it? It's on the other side of the pool. Yeah, can 75 feet away. Yeah, so here's the addition, here's the pool apron. This is hard surfacing right in here. It was it was pretty flat. He's his access is around the addition side of the house. Um you know, I wasn't surprised when he said that and it made sense to me and I think there's a fence around the entire property and there's the only way out yeah, was through the, <coughs> through the fence. And so the fence could act like erosion control. So it's going to go into his pool first. In right. other words, this is, a, this is basically a sketch. Nothing, nothing interesting. No. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's the same. Yeah, it's the the 25 foot bounds. I he didn't mention that you said no to those. I mean, those are in an area that's going to be inside his fence. So, if you want to think about that, what will work, sometimes we just say put them on the fence, put them next to the fence, put them just outside the fence. I mean, this is definitely lawn area now, inside the fence. It said in there that he was going to put pounds, no? Yes, he is. Oh, okay. So, I'm just asking you about this area that's inside the fence. Here's the fence right here. And he would have to put one there, here, probably here. And then if you bring this thing. one to there. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a, a, a notice on the fence. So. Yeah. <coughs> All right. I have two. Excellent. Pass it back. Do we have at least four signatures on that? Yes, we do. Great. All right, um, 164 Green Street. 164 Green Street, we went out to do a site visit. I was there with um, Becky and Dave. Um, 
Dave Panette, Becky Longley, and uh, we did notice that there was some omissions from the as-built plan. I did talk to the owner, Mr. Brem, no, Jeffrey Brenner, Brenner. Jeffrey Brenner, uh, and uh, he uh, asked me to call his um, his land surveyor and uh, request that these things <coughs> be put on the plan so they should be ready for the next meeting. So we're not going to move forward with this. So it was um, there was just some omissions. One was a concrete. pad, concrete pad. There was a stone paver pathway that didn't have a certain section on it, and the fence wasn't. Yes. Uh, the chain link fence wasn't part of it and if you review the old plan the original plan done by a different survey company the shed and the fence were on it so there was a there would have been a lot of confusion if we didn't straighten this out okay so that's being continued and then uh, the Salem 5 stormwater report stormwater report is um, in my opinion, it's become pretty standard. The commission no longer needs to review it based on the fact that the sediment isn't building up. Um, they, this SIM 5 has a division that handles maintenance. They will be continuing this themselves, probably not quarterly, but uh, once every couple of years or so. Um, so it's unlike a homeowner. I mean, they're, and it's unlike a independent, standalone <coughs> building. So they, the, the guy said to me that it's it's they don't need to report. It will be a benefit. Um, it actually costs five hundred dollars each time that we ask for a report. I was wondering where that nine thousand dollars came from. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm like, I love, you know, just to let you guys know how much things cost that we ask for. So I, I did, I wrote that up. Um, and that was based on the, when it got to its 75%, um, the, when the sediment builds up to 75% of the capacity of the storm scepter, um, how long that would take and the $500 uh, annually that it would cost. And it would, you know, we're talking nine thousand dollars by the time we even get to a point where we would require them to clean it <coughs> of course they wouldn't wait until it was up that high but they but they could and it would still work properly so what was it what year was i 2036 2036 yeah, so i think that we're we're this commission that sits now can just uh in comfort no harm will be done Sure. Even if they vote on that, yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we discontinue the Monitor. inspection requirements for, or <coughs> monitoring requirements, or reporting requirements. Reporting requirements for the uh, storm water at Salem 5. At Salem 5. Do we have a second? Second. No, all those in favor? <coughs> Um, nothing else happened on the tree cutting policy, but I need someone to, I need, I need a second look at another property that's come up, um, up by, on Main Street, up by Matera Cabin. I forgot the, name, the, the number, but there's, there's 20 plus trees. What? Yeah. 20 plus trees. I think a lot of them are almost falling down. But I'm not sure about every single one, and this is this is exactly what we talk about. You know, over five is it a policy or is it something different? But every everybody needs at least <coughs> on a site visit. So I, okay. you know, um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out there, and I was gonna ask Mr. Pernet to go out there, but if but yeah, you know, he's not so good anymore, getting up hills and he's on crutches, yeah. so. It's, uh, I was going to go there tomorrow, so I don't know if anyone else is what available. Time? Um, anytime, ex well, anytime, ex except till after 9.30. I can go out tomorrow. Okay. I have a small window. You have a small window? What time? 11 to 1. I can do 11 to 1, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'd rather be around 11 than time. 11 to 12 or 11 to 12.30. Is that your lunch? What's that? Is that your lunch? Uh, I'm actually uh, off tomorrow. So. Oh, really? Okay. 
Uh, when I don't I, think we need that much time. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying that. anywhere in that yeah. in that window that works for everybody. And, and when we were out on Green Street, we did see a violation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had. Let's see if I can pull this up. Was it a light that was on? No, it was it was something more, it's more gracious than that. We're calling it. Um, it? We have something. Dumping. It was. It was in our. Be good. I've lost my way on this. Here is Harry. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Rescue me here. What the heck? <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. Let's close all tabs and see where we're going, and then let's go back and. Is this where I was? What you looking for? I'm looking for my. My zip drive. Yeah, destroy the joke. Oh, there you go. Um, come on, come on, go down. And we're we're in uh, right here. So I called it. This is it right here. It's the OV OHV RDC. Outrageous homeowner violation. <laughs> Rampant disregard for the rules. <laughs> <laughs> we spotted like this. this. Why do I? We, why am I afraid this is gonna be a picture of my house? <laughs> <laughs> we spotted this on our travel, and, and <laughs> this guy, this guy is. I gotta see this. This guy is unbelievable. Yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine what this guy did. This is. It's, and I don't think he even got a building permit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Take that out. It's it's and I I've heard it's not a native species. Right? No, it's definitely not native. And <laughs> let's just check this out. I heard that this guy's an engineer. No, no. And look you? at the angle going on here. <laughs> this is that's this dangerous. Is, yeah, that's that's dangerous. And the, just check out the lawn equipment. Out outdoors. Within within striking distance. Oh. Hmm. No. Look so at, the, look at the that angle that. of this picture. Were you on this property? No. no. But it was a violation. No, so I was right. not. I made sure that I was <laughs> off the property. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Because I, I thought of that walking over there. I'm like, I'm not going to have it. Cause this this is, is my serious? joke. This is not Mike's. <laughs> So again, we may have one of these every week. It was, I think we again, should find the outrageous one. homeowner violation, rampant disregard for rules. <laughs> That's awesome. So, those swings are great, though. There you go. It, is it uh, is it just set up, or is the kid using it? No, yet? I mean he's too young to use it. Wait, uh, co <laughs> just have it out there. Co Coworker gave he uses this, he does use a little. We put him in the ba the baby seat. He likes that, but. Uh, I was gonna say that's a little early. It is. He yeah. got it from a coworker. They were moving and said, "Yeah, sure." Nice. And so it was in my garage all winter, and I wanted out of the garage. Yeah, there, there you go. It's nice. It does have. It, it does look like there's a bad angle to that A though, A frame. Yeah, it's. Uh, it doesn't look like an engineer did that. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not going on anyone's resume, but that's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike, for being such a good sport. Um, <laughs> Check with Anika, you're next. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, we've got a bill. We'll oh, maybe. Where, where are we going? <laughs> the tree cutting. What's the property? It's, it's on Main Street. It's on Main Street. I don't have the number. I told you that. Um, so, it's, so it's a existing. It's place. past. Um, it's past the ice cream place and kind of in that area towards Matera. Uh, then we have, we do have a bill that needs to be approved. Um, it's the water and sewer bill. I, I was thinking, like, man, we should pay this and see oh. what they do. I mean, I don't get it. Or, uh, you know, $14? Open space. It's like, I don't know. $14, $14 for space. Pearl Street you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's been going because on Because we've got a cup. Uh, it's a turb cup. Yeah. 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 So if we just install the head engineering and DPW install a little trench drain. What would we say? Go ahead and take the land. I mean, you know, <laughs> what's the alternative? I mean, is it, who's it to? Is it? That's right. We already went DPW? through all this when 
others were on the commission and um, it is what it is, but it just, uh, I cannot Can't I say all. believe it. So anyways, it's $13.14. Approve the bill? Yeah, so for the vote Pearl it. Street Water and Sewer. <laughs> 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 okay, it's yeah. We don't have any minutes, right? Other than the report on uh, maybe 364 Lowell Street that one of you two can do, give us, I don't I I didn't go on the property. I don't want to get in anybody's way. I went on the property. It's just they haven't set out hay bales or erosion control yet. Um, there's, so the the developer, he was out or he was out there, build manual. So nothing started at 10. Um, I got there around 12, 12 15, and um, there was one vehicle behind the house. With like, Did you see it with treads or tracks? And it was mm -hmm. kind of heading towards the wetlands, but it was kind of parked there. Um, and then there was this big, there were two other large vehicles, an orange one and a, uh, that one you were talking about that grabs the tree, cuts the base, lifts it, and drops the tree. The fellow buncher? Is that what it's called? Um, and um, basically they decided to start upland, and uh, Bill Manuel showed up pretty right then and there, and um, they were just going to start cutting down trees, start doing clearing upland, start at the upland and work down, and... Um, and Bill called us. He went out. Bill followed the guy into the woods to see what his first trees were going to be and came back and said, I think you need to take a look at this. And we walked back, and um, there were a couple of trees. So trees marked with a white ribbon uh, are supposed to stay, and they kind of demark on, on the... To the right, they kind of demark the property line and the trees that are on the other people's property, because the property line is kind of can't really tell it what it is back there. So um, the guy who was cutting the trees thought that a couple of the trees with white ribbons shouldn't have had white ribbons, and so um, the property guy said, "I know I got all these names right." Uh, property guy basically said. No, no, no. These trees here should not have white ribbons on them. So he like took the white ribbons off. I just looked at the guy like, "Well, that's his call." And then he said, "He said he's had trouble with that particular neighbor. And that that neighbor's shed was actually on their property. And they asked him to move it. So, it, so it, it sounded like. Um, and so the guy said, "I bet the neighbors came out and started tying white ribbons around trees and." I'm just like, I don't know. That's I don't know. It's hard to believe. Yep. I they don't used know. the exact same I white don't. ribbon? It's pretty, mm -hmm. I, a pretty elaborate plan. So what did Bill know. Manuel say? Yeah. Was he, he went out there with him, but then you ended up talking to, uh, yeah. like, what's his name, Mike Dodge or something like that? Or Yeah, is Mike Dodge the, the property? Yeah, he's yeah. the one that's supposed to be in charge. I don't know if it's yeah. Mike, but it's Dodge something. Is he the is architect? Mike, no, no, he's just a property guy for the company so that's doing okay. this pr project. Yeah. He said he said that he had sent out a notice, another notice to the abutters like a week ago, mm -hmm. saying that they were going to start the land clearing. And, he just, and, he, and inside the envelope, he had samples of the white and red ribbon. And no, no. Oh, I was just no, wondering no, where no. they got this. No, no, the the ribbon was just. I, mean, I was just, I was just observing. I didn't so have to plan in front of, of me, so, so I did they, put, did they at least take out a plan and and verify that this was that, or they were just doing it from memory? They were kind of doing it from memory, and basically the reason why Bill Manuel called this other guy back was to say, "This doesn't look right based on our memory. These trees should it, not only that, but the trees that they were that that they took the white ribbons off." I mean, you could see that the ones with white ribbons were kind of in a line, and these were these trees that they took the white ribbons off of. They were um, kind of off the line and closer to the building foundation. Was this outside and of our jurisdictional area? It might be. It was so. It, it was might so be. way up by the house that exists, but across the street, across that paper street. Yeah. In, in my opinion, it would have been near the farthest house in the back. Oh, okay. I, on the right. 
mm -hmm. towards I remember that homeowner saying, "I want those those trees." To add, and I remember us saying, "Well, those are outside of our jurisdiction." Father's we don't house really have on there. the right. That guy's a tree cutter himself. The father's house. That's the one that. That's the one that he he said. Well, I bet he came out and wanted to save some of the trees and. You've already shown with this. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They, not my problem. I'm not going to. I had no reason to say yes. I had no reason to say no. You're not talking about the end down by the tracks. You're talking us. Yes. To the right. Yeah, to the right. If you're looking at the if tracks, you know, it's the house to the right all the way to the back. So it's all the way in the back. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Oh, but I guess that would be close. But, but still in the upland side. We're not talking about. But that is within the 100 feet. Yeah, it is yeah, within the It's only not in the 100 feet as you get towards the house that's up by Lowell Street. Yeah, yeah. So because it t makes her, the wetland takes right turn right, because right, of the, right, <coughs> right, the 100 foot thing. jurisdictional area is on the driveways of those two houses yeah. that are across yeah, from the detention right. pond. So right. it goes up as you go back further because you have not only the wetland area going this way, but you have it going right. down in that direction right, too, right. along this track. Right. But the bottom line was I didn't have the plans that's, and, and honestly, you're back there and it's hard to get your bearings. Which tree is which tree? I have no idea. I mean, a lot of the trees are coming Sometimes down. they took it right then when they could have just grabbed them tomorrow after verifying it. Yeah, it just... Um, Were they healthy? I don't, I didn't, You're, I wasn't looking You're, up at the canopy. Surprised the guy in a machine didn't take his time and say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rip this thing down. <laughs> like, well, it's a three-day job. No, I know. <laughs> right, they said they're going to be cutting till Monday. So there was no rush. So it's I hope they got it today. right. Me too. Because, it, because planning... The planning department was also very concerned about the trees, and that's why they were all marked throughout the property, not just in the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a site where, um, you know, the person who's developing the site walks through and just goes, all these, all these ribbons on all these trees are totally wrong, you know, that the neighbors must have come out and put all these ribbons on, and I just kind of go... I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Well, you have a plan, you follow it. But you didn't, you didn't make a call, That's right? why I put things on paper, call. right? I just observed. I just, because I didn't have Put it on paper, you vote on it, really and then you reason. execute against that plan. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's, uh, hmm. Well, so, thank you for being so, out so, there at the right time, I guess. Well, accidentally at the right <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. So, so, Chuck, maybe the thing to do is when Bill submits his monitoring report, ask him to confirm that all the correct trees have been cut down. Yeah. Yeah, so another... Well, I think it's I think it's handy. I don't know if some people don't, but um, Bill's letting me. He sends me an email, but then kind of do, during the day, if there's a if there's an update like they're not coming at ten, they're going to be here closer to twelve. I'm getting that by a text, okay. so I'm in more communication. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can just tell him what's going on with the trees. Did you verify? It? You know, I'll send him an email tomorrow because that seems good important enough to have on an email not a text so i also had a i had talked to the resident who lives just to the right of that street opening so you know the one who's probably been using that whole land as his own private parking lot and uh and you know he told me he knew the, the resident who used to live in that house at the front of lowell street you know it's just how Redding just has gone from a variety of fields to, he started going through all the different, he started talking about Linnea Drive being developed. He remembers, like, he's been in town since the 70s. And he says, I know people are getting really upset about, like, lots getting developed, he said, but it's been happening since the 70s. Like, it used to be farmer's fields that are, we used to go get corn at, and now... It's this road and that neighborhood and this development. So like you guys that. didn't remember Jack Rivers? He was a developer in the 80s. He did that whole Sanborn, I think. Yeah. That was in, that was kind of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. But because I was talking to the guy who, um, who cut the tree down, who was, who was running that machinery before he went back, and I said, are you, you know, are you ready for some upset neighbors to walk over? And the guy tells me, he goes, yeah, you know what happened once when I was in 
Dukesbury or Groton or somewhere. He said, I took a bullet. <laughs> and he walks up to his machine. And at the base of his glass, his view window, there's this little patch. He goes, almost got me in the leg. It's like somebody came up with a gun and was like, no, you're not taking these trees down. The only thing harder is repossessing a fella butcher. <laughs> or a grapple skitter. So anyway. <laughs> so it's, you know, time marches on. Good. There it is. It's hard to get in there with the construction on Lowell Street. Hmm. Well, those trees were the right ones. The right ones. I suppose everyone does tonight. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised Bill was didn't take out the plan. Did it by, you know, K Kentucky yes. windage. So yeah. the same in this. Well, it sounds like this was inside the hundred foot buffer. Is, is Bill is Bill's task out there to also do everything outside of? Bill's really out there to satisfy the notice of intent or the, the order of conditions, right? Is is he the one? If it were outside of the jurisdiction, is he also doing that for them, or I think he is. Well, actually. I think he is, but um, the engineer is also, and his name always escapes me. Do you remember who the engineer is? Oh, got one of us. He's probably upset, but. Um, is it Hughes? No, oh. it's, okay. yeah. Williams and Sparagis? I don't know, maybe. Anyways. Um, you know, I, I forget his name because he keeps on, he keeps on emailing me. I'm, I'm CC'd on his reports, and he sends them all to the planning department. And Julie's not even here, so um, so I'm not getting his direct emails. Oh, what the hell's his name? Yeah. Oh, whatever. But he also is running, the engineer is also kind of seems to be in charge. So we have, we have two people going at this dad something. Oh, I remember that. Dad. Dad something. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But that's him. There's. That's it. Okay. Are you on motion? Oh, uh, I have a... Are we here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have something. Um, we, we've only got four people, but June is when we need to think about another chair we need to mm -hmm. but I didn't we I didn't feel like doing this meeting because I was hoping we'd get our other two members that would be most fair so next and I guess we have about five notices of intent coming up next next meeting I guess it's really packed five notices of intent yeah we have um Independence, what, I don't know what it is called. Um, we have the one on uh, 1264, 1260, 1264 Main Street, Veterans Way, that's what it's called. Um, and that's, there's three there. And then we have Perfectos that wants to put in three new parking spots, um, but they haven't, I mean, there's some questions about the planting plan, and I discussed that with um, Becky and Dave. But it looks like some plants weren't put in where I thought they were going to be put in. But I know we said in lieu of doing the core logs on the stream that, and back of the building, which probably didn't seem to work out, they weren't planted at all. But the ones in front, as you pull in to the left-hand side, those, those are fabulous. They've come in real well. So they want to put in three parking spots. They'll be in. Um, and... Yeah, I don't have the list in front of me. I don't know who else is there, but but there's there's another development that has two coming in. Uh, so it's, it's quite full. So who's coming to the site visits? Ika, Mike. Somebody is. N Nine o'clock is now very difficult for me. Uh, so I don't know for the summer if we could start going to later in the day again. I mean, we used to do them at like four or. Um, 
I could do that. Nine is or nine thirty is is tough for me now. Yeah, but four or five, you're not there. Uh, Unless we did them on Tuesday, but don't you have to be here? Yeah, Tuesday is public hours, um, and five towards the end of the day is is kind of public hours also. But what's What's the best or the earliest you can get back to do these? What do you mean? So you're saying five, so could you do it at four? Could right, you do I it? could do it at four. If we did Mondays at four, I could do that. I don't care when they happen. I'll let me in there. It's fine with me, but you'd only get a few in, a few site visits in. That's, that's the only thing before you need to leave. I'm, I'm likely not to leave. Um, so, you know, sometimes my I'm on the CPA committee in Arlington, so um, that's Monday nights. So there would be a need to leave at least by 6 to get there at the right time. Um, yeah, yeah safe has always seemed to be a problem. Um, Should we get back to the weekend? No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, or you can, but I won't be there. Just telling her. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys just do it on Monday or Sundays or something. Sunday, no, we had, Sunday we had, morning. We had, we had two groups. Yeah. One went that went Sunday mornings and one that went Monday afternoon, I think. And Sunday work. morning worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. I have to return the week. Well, I'm not going to be here after the next <laughs> meeting. You don't count. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can do four o'clock on Monday. Mm -hmm. I can try and make it. Fifteen oh three Main Street. The property next to Matera Cabin. They'll be at our next meeting also. Uh -huh. Two houses. Nothing more. Mm -hmm. So there's the four. Factos would be the fifth. That's a notice of intent. Okay. Factos is going to get there. That would be good. There's a lot of questions about that. But um, it, is, it is a tough site. But there's a lot of questions. See, right now they're parking on, on the grass on both sides of the dumpster that's there. So if you ever go past and you see the dumpster, on the left-hand side, if he pulls his, you know, any car in there, he's going to be in the 25-foot yeah. zone. Yeah. If they pull it in on the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, sorry, next to uh, Bully Coley, they'll be in the, they won't be in the 35-foot zone. They actually have to go, like, you know, 15 feet back before they're in the 35-foot zone. So that's where the parking spots are proposed. I've only been that lot once, but it is tight. Yeah. But people park across the street and yeah. walk across 28. Yeah. So, um, so tough. Question. So this Saturday is Friends and Family Day? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, I just saw that. It's like, whoa. So, yeah, that caught me by surprise. <laughs> that's, that's what I was, before <laughs> you, totally before caught you me by surprise. Uh, asked yeah. for it. I was, that's what I was going to ask Maria. So you have an opportunity to go, but I was also caught by surprise. This was um, just a chance phone call that I got, and it came up during the conversation, and I was surprised by it. And then just kind of backtracking, Ann gets all the friends and family day <laughs> emails. And it just, I don't think anyone talked about it in town hall. Oh, interesting. So I'm... And, and I can tell you a bunch of reasons, but, you know, right now, I'm kind of by myself because Julie's not here. She's out on maternity leave, and and there's really no one around us. But And the people that are here, the housing and the other people, they're, they're not doing it. So I was surprised. So anyways, I quickly called Kim H., Kim Honnitschlager, and she said that... Um, you can make a quick phone call. We can we can try to get something going. Does anyone want to go to this? And this come upcoming, I know that we had our world famous, you know, team of T 
team of one there last year. Anika was the only one that showed up. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I've got. I'm committed Saturday until 1.30, and it goes from 10.30 to 3. So that's why I wanted to so, ask before I jumped on that. I'm in Marshfield. Yeah. And Will's turtle, he said that's available. Uh, it's supposed to be a sunny day. So either I, other members do the heavy lifting, or... So what time do we usually have it from? I, I could uh, I could definitely do the, the early part of the day. Uh, what time... I, I forget the timing. The whole day is 10.30 to 3. 10.30 to 3. When is the setup, though? 9.30? Usually. Well, we brought the stuff. Usually. Was it you and me last year? Yes. You guys yeah. did, yeah. We're done in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. set it up. Stuff down there, but... Yeah. Oh. I'm going to be out of town. I, don't, I couldn't do the whole day, mm. so... Well, you know, it's possible to just do you know, a couple of hours and then close up shop. Close up shop. Up shop. I have no problem with it. And just have a presence. I don't think, I think it's too late to do any sort of raffle. stuff do you want to have available? Just the usual stuff. Just, you want all the usual stuff? How about the cool. sign? <laughs> the sign, a table, and... I'll see what I can do and see if we can get... We don't need a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, the rest of the stuff is just in a box, right? You know what, you know what I... Could get to you, so Mike. There's, there's a bunch of it that I just think is wh whatever, and we just leave it in the box. Well, we, were, but we were counting on more graft from people, but it didn't happen. So what we've done before is we've given um, like uh, four hours or a certain amount of time the at the Terra Cabin. Yeah. So I still have that template somewhere. I could print it out and just if you wanted to just email it to me. I can so all you'd it. have would be a table with like a little raffle jar. Yep. That's that. Sounds good to me. Reading sign and you could just wing it. And they put, they, because this is what happened last year. They do the tent for us because mm -hmm. I felt like they, we. Right, and we didn't know where to put the stuff because we were there before the tent. Before the tent, that's right. Right, the easy ups weren't there yet. Yeah, but you check in with the person and they tell you which spot. Right, that's, I yeah. think that's yeah. what yeah. we ended up yeah. where we ended up. And we just ended up setting up before the tent or just. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good to have a presence. If, and. I'll do it as long as I can do it. I'll keep it open. Do half as good a job as you did on that swing set. And we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get you the raffle stuff. Maybe I could get it. Maybe I could get it to you at tomorrow's tree cutting thing. Yeah. I mean, if you if you want to just email it to me, I can print it off. Okay. Print it off. All right. Great. Oh, well, that was that was easy. Just standing out there. There's no table. <laughs> I was like, like, put the sign around my tell you if I can't yeah, get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Harmonica, banjo, and, and no, I was just completely yeah. surprised. I'm like, yeah. where are all the emails? You know, my yeah. my uh, Nora said it's something to me this week. It's Reading Town. I, I wonder if this weekend. I know. I wonder if the contact person that also retired. I don't. I don't know. So Anne used to get all the stuff? I didn't get anything. I didn't even know about it. And um, I just saw the sign coming in tonight. It's like, oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, I was, I was kind of shocked because we've, we've been pretty consistent with that. And I know the, the turtle loves to be there. Looks forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So as long as I've been on this commission, you guys have talked about the turtle. And the turtle has never actually made a showing. Yes, it has. It showed once. No, not since I've been on the commission. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, really? He wasn't I, on the I was the one who's like put the. No. It drove me insane. The poor thing is like. It's a box trap. Oh. It's trying to get out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic. Uh. <laughs> Wait a minute. What was it doing again? It is. It is. It's, it's just a like great, it's a great PR for conservation. Can we get a close up on this? Can we? What was it doing? It just was <laughs> hitting the glass, moving, and just, oh, it was awful. I, I, I uh, thought make it would enjoy the heck out of itself. To adjourn. I would second that. All those in favor. Yes. Damn a time.